Are we live? Are we live? Hey, hello everybody. I hope all of you are doing very well. Um, oh yeah, okay, we are live. We are live. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> There's always some last minute stuff, right? So whenever I'm doing some project over here, I have all my things around me and I had to clear out my space. So hello everybody. Thank you for joining me. Welcome to the Real Tarot, the live stream. Lost but not forgotten Fridays. Um, and uh, what can I say? Thank you to my subs subscribers. Thank you so very much for your continued support, for your emails, your comments, your participation. You know, just uh, making the time in your life to come and meet with me and have these, uh, what shall we say, interactions, if you will. I really, really do appreciate it. So thank you so very much. And if I'm going to be meddling with my hair, that's because I am constantly, I'm, I'm, I'm look, look how weird it is. I can't. You know how they say the worst thing is when your hair is growing out of this out of a style? Y'all, that's so true. I've given up. I'm like, I'm not going to mess with it. Anywho, so, um, and for those of you who are just visiting for the first time, thank you for joining us. I hope you decide to subscribe and become a part of the real family. Get used to it. Sometimes I am a little squirrel squirrel. So <laughs> I get distracted sometimes and I am really crazy it's getting worse as you get older you know being so ocd about the visuals don't ask me why but it's like anyway uh, so let me not focus on that let's focus on this so let me first and foremost welcome all of y'all let's see afro human hey girl <laughs> gypsy girl hello uh debbie bagley hey debbie elizabeth aguano hello uh uh derwin h hello uh, Tammy Smith, hello. Kathleen Cheney, hello. Uh, Carriage House, hello, girl. Um, <laughs> Shock Sembler, hello. Ursula Love, hello. Ursula, are you new here? I think your name sounds familiar, but if I haven't noticed you before, I sincerely apologize. Welcome <laughs> to the real family. Oh my God, Debbie, you're so sweet. Uh, San Diego in the chat. Oh my God, SoCal girl. Let me tell you something about SoCal. Uh, I, I used to uh, go down to San Diego, you know, not very often, say once, uh, once a month, a lot of fun uh, in that, what is that Main Street gas lamp district? Oh my God, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. But uh, I have some good friends still in Southern California. So um, Afro Human says she's busy being a grandma, <laughs> favorite name. Uh, Courtney, hello. Wait, I missed somebody. Oh, no. Carrie Finley, hello. Scout Inquirer, hello. Uh, Vivid Dreamer, hello. Cindy Sue, hello. Ali Ali, hello. Suzy Q, hey, girl, hi. Oh, I was supposed to get that stuff to show. Oh, gosh. Okay, let me... Uh, Ursula says, I'm not new. I'm so old. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so... Uh, I did not, oh my God, I should have got all my stuff, that whole box. Uh, I just want to say uh, it's, it's, in, it's in the other room. And so just going and getting all that, I think it's going to be like, uh, I just want to give a shout out to um, uh, Susie Q. Thank you so very much. I received your gifts. Trust me, I was quite surprised. I was like, I'm not expecting any package. So what's going on? And I know I didn't order some anything. So I was like, did I order something and forget about it? So, you know, usually that happens with Amazon. If they don't have it in stock, then you forget all about it. And one day it'll be like, oh, you know, here you go. And I was like, no, there's nothing. And then I was like, okay, so thank you so very much. She sent me a box of goodies. So unexpected. Thank you so much. And girl, that taffy, I had it in Mark to hide it from me because that would have been gone in two seconds flat. Okay, so thank you so much. That does bring back memories and I love the, I should go get it, right? So, uh, will it be rude if I just up and go here? Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what, we'll do it when we're on the Zoom when it's more intimate and everybody's around there, okay? Let's not take the focus away, but I just want to say thank you so much. Every, the, oh, and she sent me, to heck with it. I'm just going to bring it. Give me one second, okay? Thank you. 
Yeah, I just want to uh, show because I must show off like that. Bunny, these goodies are for me, not for you. There. <laughs> All right, y'all. Excuse me. And I, I don't, you know what, Suzuki, I asked her, I said, do you mind if I show it? And I didn't read her email. I read it, but didn't read it. So, Suzy, my bad girl, my guy. So, uh, she sent me this, this box. And it's, first and foremost, the card. Look how cute it is. Thank you so much. Look, I'm just excited, okay? I'm just excited. I'm not showing this because, oh, you know, I just, I was, I'm excited. So, she, it's a beautiful postcard. And she's written me a little note. So, I'm going to keep that here. Stay, baby. And, oh, yeah, this is the bomb. Okay, it's a coin meal. May Chang, Bergamot, and Elang. Oh, oh, it's so good. It's so good. And um, these little wax thingies said cedar wood, geranium, and orange. And then, what's that? Scottish. Scottish. Rapeseed. Aromatherapy oil. It's fantastic. I haven't yet tried it. And then I got this little cream. I haven't yet opened it, girl. Uh, it's called the Singing Nettle Cream. I've kind of heard of this, but thank you so much. I haven't tried it as yet. Um, I'm going to keep it here so I remember. Um, I, I heard that it helps with skin issues. I heard that it helps with removing the sting out of if you have any allergies or anything like that. So I haven't yet tried it. This is the bomb.com. This is what kind of really gets me. Bunny, here, have at it. So... Uh, Look at look at how cute this is. <laughs> a little clodron. And I was so excited when I saw this. I was like, this is just so perfect. I'm going to take it out. Uh, I'm going to toss this here. You guys, I'm sorry, okay, if I'm showing off or whatever. But I'm just so excited. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> okay. So this is the cutest little thing ever. And I am so going to use this. Look how cute it is. Wait. Look how cute. <laughs> I love it. It is the cutest thing ever. And uh, clearly I haven't used it. It's perfect. I can put a little tea candle here at the bottom and put the wax in it. So I'm going to set it somewhere where I'm not going to drop it or do anything crazy like that. But uh, uh, thank you so much. I absolutely love it. Hang on one second. Uh, where's my thingy? Hold on, baby. Okay. So I wanted to show you something I have. Of course, clearly it's it's dusty at the moment, but which we can kind of clean up, right? But it's still dusty. Look at this little baby I found. Now, I don't know where I got this from. So I don't know if this can be used for uh, something in the kitchen during Halloweens, like if you want to put some stuff in it or what I don't know but I just like it and I use it here sometimes you know when I'm doing my little portions when I'm doing my witchy works <laughs> you know I kind of use it and I just love it it's so cool look at that I love it so let me set that oh wait okay no place for that but there so thank you so very much so appreciated haven't opened it haven't used it as yet but I will not to say that I won't and I gotta make space for all of this because you know me, I want everything by my side, right? There we go. Okay, there. This can go in the trash. And getting started, getting started. The scent of that candle is just so divine, y'all. So divine. So, ah, uh, so. <sighs> what can I say? It's, I'm so excited. <laughs> I get so excited when I get things like that. So, thank you so much. <laughs> Hi, Alia. Oh, uh, Rock and Robin. Hello. I know that pot is so cute, isn't it? And it goes with my little, um, my uh, Orvo here. What do you call that? The crystal ball or the black onyx thingy. Uh, Pandora's box. Hello. Who else? <laughs> it's all made from a little family company. Where? Oh, that's so cool. Oh, wow. Oh, that's good that it is SLS and paraben free. Yeah. That is so cool. You know, I love to, to, yeah, the cauldron is so cute, isn't it? Uh, the, the uh, supporting like family business, you know, it's like, 
why shouldn't we support family business whenever i travel i try to look up uh, on yelp and see you know what uh, family owned restaurant is around those little hole in the wall restaurants and i try to patronize that those places because you know a i want to try different things and b you know uh, the big chains uh, they don't need any more money than they already have so why not encourage uh, you know local businesses and local families so yeah so there we go all right you all Ooh, the excitement okay so one thing i want to say is this was like uh, a case that was suggested by gypsy girl so thank you gypsy girl uh, wait i missed something How's Karachal doing? Oh God, girl, I <laughs> tell me opening gifts and all that stuff. Like you can put a gift in, in a sock, right? In a recycled paper bag and give it to me. I'd be seriously excited. For me, it's like, oh, what's in there? You know? <laughs> Buying local always, always. Thank you so much, Suzy Q. I know that is so, oh, that... cauldron wax melt thingy was from amazon but that is so cute that is so cute y'all anyway um see now i'm getting now i'm all about gifts so oh, what else can i get from amazon i <laughs> know i got to stop my spending so um this is a case that uh, gypsy girl was telling me about a uh, couple days ago i wish was like what are you going to do yesterday maybe what are you going to do for um the not a lost but not forgotten friday and i was like i don't know and she told me about this these two kids perry cohen and austin stefanos stefanos uh both 14 years of age they went they've been missing for 6 years 8 months and 28 days uh both of them 14 years of age uh, uh buddies what hello and um something about how they went fishing somewhere in florida i didn't pay attention to that sorry um you know a uh, gypsy girl can probably put that up somewhere in florida they went fishing on their little little you know these 14 year old kids going uh, 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 fishing and then they don't come back but as my thing is as um as experienced as they may be like 14 year old kids going out deep sea fishing like not deep sea fishing just going out on a little dinghy on the ocean i don't know So Gypsy Girl, I don't know if you want to uh, want to put up some of that, uh, you know. Ali Ali, hi Kirtana. Today I am three years sober. What? Congratulations! That is so cool. Congratulations. Good job. Keep it up. You can do it. You got it, girl. You've all your your you won already. So it's now just keeping the pace. Awesome. I love it. good for you girl that is good that is awesome stand your ground stay in your power you know what mind over matter you can overcome anything you you want to overcome the question is what is it that you want what is it that truly matters so clearly you got that congratulations girl thank you for sharing that with us i do appreciate it and you know what there's always ongoing support ongoing uh, positive energy and positive vibes being sent to everybody i mean whoever may you know i have to say let me just kind of have a little bit of a rant here you know we look at these people they live in their beautiful castles and all that who knows what the heck they're going on what's happening behind closed doors you know robin williams for example i mean come on not a moment in time do i ever recollect seeing him in any of his you know interviews or red carpets or whatever even a glimpse into uh, you know uh, his his uh, his troubles and his conflicts right i don't think i ever saw that there's a high possibility i might have missed it um i don't know body language that very well i'm not an expert so there's a high possibility that, that i might not have seen that or caught on to any of that so having said that i will i will say though that everybody has some sort of a struggle what is a struggle to me may not be a struggle to you right and vice versa so considering that i mean i think just having compassion for yourself which is the most important thing is really important have compassion for yourself your true self your inner self and then having compassion for other people sure we are all human beings you know there are some days where we get snippy at each other i mean hey case in point i fess up i've been snippy for no apparent reason sometimes i own it and i realize i apologize i own it 
but for whatever reasons we get snippy i have learned i have learned not to take it too personally unless like i'm like i always give it a, give them a couple of chances and say okay is this a consistent habitual thing or is it just a one off thing if it's a one off thing i'm like yeah well whatever it's not it's not the end of the world to me but if it's a habitual thing then i'll be like all right enough read what's that read the hand or speak to the hand or something like that right read the hand i don't even know so you know we all have our struggles and like i said the most important thing is have compassion for yourself if you have compassion for yourself healing from whatever strife you have is it's already half the battle won okay i'm going to stop gabbing on cuz you know me um what was i going to say um thing that i forgot and i forgot cuz i forgot so anyway um anti hegel robin had dementia yeah it's crazy isn't it yeah we all have a cross to bear girl absolutely oh let me share something else with you all folks let me share something else this happened just now right so uh ma came home had dinner i had a few minutes i uh, was sitting on the couch just chilling talking to him and all of a sudden mr sneak a lot here he sir sneak a lot he just vanished I didn't pay much attention because he knows my timing and all that so I assumed he'd either gone to the bedroom waiting for me because before I do this you know the usual last minute visit the facilities and this that and the other or he would be here well he wasn't in the bedroom and I came here guess where he's sitting same spot between my desk and the chair guess what he was looking for exactly and i'm like da what is wrong with you and he gets up looks at me very sheepishly and goes and lays down over there So this is this is a ongoing ongoing thing. So I don't know what what's going on with him. And I'm like, you know, puppy dog, you really need to get a grip of yourself. You're kind of just attention seeking. So anywho, sneak a lot. Yeah, he's he's sir snore a lot. Sir sneak a lot. Sir whine a lot. Sir shake me down for more treats a lot. <laughs> All right. So now um I did some basic uh, uh what you might call for these two kids. Let's get on with this reading and then of course we'll have time and if there's any other questions you'll have today for regarding any other case, uh you know, we can uh, we can uh, look into it. So we have Perry Cohen. Uh he was born on January 30th, 2001 and he was reported missing as of July 24 2015 so we don't know if these kids of course they went missing on the same day whether that would be considered the date of death or date of missing there's a high possibility that they could have survived they may have been alive for another 2 uh, days 2 years 3 years there's a high chance that they're still alive who knows i'd like to think that they're still alive right so uh, all right honey what you got for me girl yeah exactly Hang on. Sorry about that. So who knows, right? They could they could have been alive for a couple of years. We don't know. But we will consider that to be as a date of death. I I hope I'm wrong. I hope they're still alive. Then we have Austin Stefanos. Stefanos, y'all. I'm sorry if I'm butchering names. These are pronouns, right? He was born on December first, two thousand, and of course missing same day, July twenty fourth, two thousand fifteen. So Perry Cohen is an Aquarius, okay, and uh, Austin is a Sagittarius. Now here's the thing. So Perry Cohen. Uh, and and they were missing on july 24th so that would be considered cancer right cancer season so perry cohen's first house is aquarius uh his seventh house is active which is leo and his third house is cancer okay so and for austin his uh first house is of course sagittarius his third house which is uh aquarius and his sixth house is taurus So it gets a bit confusing. Say they were one was born in Aquarius season, but reported missing in Cancer season. 
One was born in Sagittarius season and reported missing in Cancer season. So that's that, right? So it gets a bit confusing. That's why I, I, I sometimes I think maybe I shouldn't go so much into astrology. But then again, it is what it is. So y'all will let me know if I'm confusing y'all, right? So let's get started with this and see. Uh, so let's take a look. How shall we do this? Um, to, to do... Carrie Finlay, this so too I have been through. Oh, wow. Look. Y'all, I tell you, ever since that whole whole uh, pandemic hit, like, I feel like so many more people are like, I don't know if I'm just imagining it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel, I feel like a lot more people have figured out that, oh, you know what, I, uh, I, uh, my hair, okay. A lot more people are uh, being diagnosed with uh, illnesses or whatever. Am I imagining it or what? I don't know. Okay. So what is the time now? Okay, I'm going to give it, uh, say, uh, absolutely, absolutely, Alia. So I'm going to do something else. I wanted to announce this, but I was like, okay, you know, how shall I do it? What shall I do? So I'm going to give it another, uh, what's the word? So 7.18, another 12 minutes. 7.30 will be the cutoff. So when I get the... 7.30 mark over here, I'll know the timing, right? Anybody is interested in getting uh, a one month, okay? One month. Uh, that's going to be for the month of May. It's not going to be now because we are already almost finished April, right? Month of May for one month, you all will get a, uh, a free uh, subscription for your week ahead reading for your sign. Now, let me make this very, 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 very clear. I want to be very clear. So what you need to do, and this cuts off at 7.30, okay, 7.30 it cuts off. So send me an email, okay, and uh, uh, send me an email and uh, put in your, your uh, sign that you want to see. That would be great. Or you can go to my website, www.therealtarot1123.com and register as a member. Please register as a member. Registering as a member is free. If you're not a member, I cannot assign videos to you. And put in your email address. I think there's a slot where you can pick your sign. If you do see it, then pick your sign. If not, send me an email saying that, hey, you know what? This is my email address. I want to subscribe for this sign. Now, it's only going to be for the month of May because I know I haven't been posting those videos here on, on the YouTube and I, and I know a lot of people, okay, this is freaking annoying me, whatever y'all, whatever. So um, I, I uh, figured I may as well kind of, y'all can see that I'm still doing those videos and see if it works for you. And then maybe you'll see in the value of do I want to subscribe or not type of a thing. And if you don't, that's totally fine. No offense taken. But it's going to be only for one month and it is going to be for the month of May. However many weeks there are in May, you will get it for one. Choose your sign. Pick and choose your sign. Okay. So 7.30 is the cutoff. All right. So send me an email with the sign you want your subscription for. And also you have to go to the website and register. Okay. Remember that I cannot register your thing on the website and I cannot do that on your behalf. You have to do it. Okay. And registration to become a member is free. Okay. So, uh, okay. Thank you. I will stay on the topic. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> aye, aye, Capitan. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Perry Cohen. What do we have for Perry? What do we have for Perry Cohen? I'm going to do quick pulls. I wish I had another deck like this, y'all. I keep saying that and I never do that. Let me do this. Uh, I'll just draw the cards. I'll do, just draw the cards. I will do three on the left for Perry and three on the right for Austin and then we'll take it from there, okay? We'll work with this. Hi, Lucinda. Specify the sign that you want to... Uh, uh, yes, please email me by 7.30. I'm going to cut off. 
uh, and it doesn't take two seconds you can just or you don't need to do anything just send me an email and in the subject line put your sign that's all I need you don't need to send me any great message or you know Kirtana we love you although I know you do so you don't have to say it but if you do I'll appreciate it <laughs> and I'll say I love you back <laughs> so um, but remember you have to go on my website and register if you don't register I cannot do it for you that's the way the website is is set up all right, enough. Get on with it. Let's do this, yo. Perry Cohen, show me what I need to know with Perry Cohen. Perry Cohen. Perry Cohen. Okay. Oh, my God. Look at this. Okay. I'm surprised Sagittarius popped up because I thought that would pop up for, for uh, Austin. I would be surprised if it switches. Maybe we'll get Sagittarius for him and for um, uh, Austin we'll get Aquarius. Who knows? I'm going to pull for Austin. We have Gemini. So now let's pull for uh, Perry. One more card. Oopsie. The Moon card. And shuffle again and get one for Austin. Leo. Very interesting. These boys were fated to go, y'all. That much I'll tell you. Um, definitely fated to go. For Perry, we have Scorpio. And for Austin, we have Pisces. Very interesting. So now we can delve further into this. I got their little details information in this. So I'm going to keep it here so that, you know, whatever. No, that's not working. Here, there we go. So. For Perry, we have Sagittarius, right? Now, Perry is an Aquarius. So, if he is an Aquarius, Sagittarius is going to be his 11th house. 11th house talks about like-minded people, groups, and friends. So, just hold on to this information and then we'll expand, okay? And then he has a moon card. Now, the moon card is traditionally in the tarot, it's known as a Pisces card. So, him being an Aquarius, Pisces is his second house. Now, let's consider this. Sagittarius, if it is his 11th house, like-minded people, groups, and friends, and if Pisces is his second house talks about values talents possessions ability to earn income etc now you may ask kirtana they're 14 year old kids so how does the ability to earn income etc matter think outside the box use your imagination but hold on then we have scorpio now if he's an aquarius scorpio is going to be his 10th house and 10th house talks about career reputation morals and life goals again he's too young young kid right but not that a young kid wouldn't have life goals and morals that's not what i'm saying so and then we have um for for uh, austin he has gemini 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 uh and he is a sagittarius now sagittarius and gemini actually get along very well but let's take a look so sagittarius one two three four five six seventh house seventh house talks about friends partners contracts relationships marriage etc of course 14 year old kids marriage doesn't apply but hold your horses then we have leo so if he's a sag his sister sign fire sign one two three four five six seven eight nine ninth house talks about father distant travel higher education intellect and then he also has pisces here now what are the odds he's a sagittarius sagittarius and pisces are both ruled by jupiter so one two three four fourth house talks about emotions home mother family roots etc y'all Think outside the box. Look at the synchronicities. These two kids were destined to disappear on the same day. It, 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 there was a reason why, and I'm getting, oh my goodness. They were destined, this this was, uh, astrologically, the energies are around them. Something, I, do I want to call it a calamity or do I call it a major incidence in their life would, uh, would definitely have occurred at that time. Okay? Now, we considered all of this you remember all of this now remember when i did their numbers and their charts perry is an aquarius and austin is a sagittarius so perry his seventh house and his third house are active correct so for perry the seventh perry is an aquarius so his seventh house is leo now where is leo leo is in austin's side think about that for a second okay now for perry he's an aquarius his third house is Cancer, right? We don't have Cancer in either place, so let's leave that alone. 
Now for Austin, his first house is Sagittarius. Where is his first house? Sagittarius? Sagittarius is on Perry's side. Okay? And for Austin, his third house is Aquarius. Who's an Aquarius? Perry is an Aquarius. And for Austin, his sixth house is Taurus. Okay? We don't have a Taurus here, so let's leave that. Do you see, do you see the crossover of energies, all that mix-up of energies? And you begin to wonder as to, and I'm getting, I'm seriously getting the chills already. I'm telling you people, if, if anybody's around me, they better speak up or they better hush up. Because it kind of gets me mad when they just hang around and they're not stepping forward and they're not talking. That's the most annoying thing, y'all. Um, if you talk to, <laughs> of course I can't control it. But to me, that's annoying. If I leave my energy field open and say, okay, if you have a message come through and they just hang around and they don't want to talk, I'm like, okay. Okay, now what do you want me to do? Do jumping jacks for you? I'm not. So, so do you understand how the energies are crossed over? And, and then you begin to wonder, how in God's world is it possible? Cards don't lie, okay? The energies speak for themselves. So with such intense crossovers of energy, if you will, then I would say at least 8 out of 10. The only thing that hasn't popped up is Taurus and Cancer. But that's fine. Everything else has popped up. So 8 out of 10 is a pretty strong indication of the kind of energies that were sur surrounding them. And there is no doubt in my mind that this was predestined, if you will. It was almost karmic, if you will. Now, having said all of that, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, Kirtana, everything is karmic. Well, you know what? That's the way I look at it. So that's just the way I look at it. Now, um, we talked about Sagittarius for, um, for uh, uh, Perry, correct? Let me keep this in this side. For Perry, correct? So, if he is an Aquarius and Sagittarius is his 11th house, let's, let's revisit that. Mm -hmm. Remember I said like-minded people, groups, and friends. So, I'm going to say with him, for certain, for certain, with such an emphasis on Jupiter over there, because Aquarius is ruled by Saturn and Uranus, with Jupiter over there, I would say he did have a pretty large group of friends, right? He was quite popular, I would say. He, was, he, he might have had a good group of friends and a popular kid, okay? Now, having said that, having said that, there is somebody in his friend circle who might kind of have a vague idea or over the period of years might have connected dots, think about things or heard something and who kind of might have brought it to the attention of whoever parents, authorities, but it was sidelined. That's what I'm saying. Then we have the moon card. The moon card is a Pisces card and he's an Aquarius. Pisces is the second house. So again, look at the, look at the, look at how the energies are, hang on, very intense energies, okay? Let me show you. So we have uh, Sagittarius here. Let me expand this for a second. So we have Sagittarius, right? Wait, here? Oh, God. It's okay. Here, Sagittarius, ruled by Jupiter. Okay? Moon, ruled by Jupiter. Scorpio, ruled by Mars and Pluto. These are heavy hitters. And uh, Pisces is also, uh, the moon card, of course, is a Pisces card. Pisces is also ruled by Neptune. These are some serious heavy hitters, y'all. Serious, serious heavy hitters. So I wonder if somebody around his friend circle would have had a vague idea as to what was going on. Maybe a friend was asked, hey, man, do you want to go John Doe? Okay, Perry might have said, hey, John Doe, do you want to go? And he might have said, no, nah, I'm not coming. Um, which saved his life. And then we have Scorpio. Now, he's an Aquarius. If Scorpio, uh, 12, 11, 10, 000. 10 000 talks about career, reputation, morals, and life goals. I'm going to say this kid, this Perry kid, might have been quite, uh, from a very young age, very determined about what he wanted to do in life, what he wanted to do. He was like that kind of a child, right? Somebody who was uh, as playful, as young, as happy as a 14-year-old can be. Also quite a bit of intense energy around him and very clear about what, it, what he wanted to accomplish in life. And this thing is so annoying me. I'm seriously, girlfriend, get your act together there or not. <sighs> okay. Very intense uh, in terms of what he wanted to accomplish in life and what he wanted to do in life. Okay. Um, then on this side, we have Austin Stephanos. Stephanos. So he is a Sagittarius. Now think about it. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter and he has uh, Gemini here and Gemini is Mercury, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seventh house. 
friends, marriage, partners, contracts and relationships. For him, I'm going to say his relationships with his uh, contractual relationship, right? Contractual relationship could be uh, karmically contractual or it could be uh, contractual relationships as in within between his parents, between his family members or, or, or such, right? So contractual relationships, there's a big tie over there. I don't know what that tie is. We'll, we'll figure that out in a little bit. And then you have Leo. So if he's a Sagittarius, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand. Nine thousand talks about father, distant travel, higher education, intellect. So there is some kind of a weird dynamic in, in terms of his relationship with his dad or something to do with, with his father. And then you have Pisces. Now for him, Pisces is going to be the fourth house and fourth house talks about emotion, mother, family, roots, etc. So there is some kind of a dynamic going on between his father and between his mother. There's some sort of a between, see, so even when we procreate and we bring our kids into this world, we have a karmic spiritual contractual relationship with them, correct? So there's some dynamic going on over there. Gypsy girl, if you have, okay, she just posted something. We must be uh, communicating telepathically. A friend of the boy said they had told him they were going to go to the Bahamas. What? Thank you, carriage house. How the heck were they going to go to the Bahamas? On that little dingy, like what were they thinking? What were they going to go to Bahamas and do? I think that's a bit far-fetched, you know. I, I don't know. They could have said it. I, I wasn't there. I didn't witness that conversation, so I don't know. Uh, so let's uh, leave that alone. I don't know. Could be. But uh, Gypsy Girl, if you have any information with regards to uh, the parents uh, or the dynamics between both sets of families or parents or anything like that, uh, let me know. Afro-human, you're right. Life path uh, predetermined. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's move on. So I'm going to be using, this is a slightly more adult deck, I would say, but not adult. There's no adult theme in this. I mean, there's nothing adult in this. This is just a deck of cards. But I'm wondering if I want to use this or if I want to use something. Else. No, let's just use this. Actually, hang on. Let me get this other deck here. Hang on one second. Oh, excuse me. Don't mind me, Puka. I'll just walk around you, right? Because you are the king of calm and you take up all the space. Right, Puka? Okay. I, I'll probably use that deck, but I'm just wanting to see what the energy is with regards to this deck. And of course, you're lucky. Oh, what deck is that? Well, top secret. I can't show you. Yeah, so much for top secrets. Okay, let's just leave it there. Okay, let's just leave that there. Top secret. This is Ciro Machetti. Ciro Machetti's artwork is something great. <sighs> okay, let's see what I feel the energy I get from this. I, I have quite a few of. Uh, Chiro Machetti's decks. Again, well-used cards. I mean, I've used them quite, quite a bit. I'll tell you what. I'll use this for Perry, and I'll use this for. Uh, I'll use this for Perry, and I'll use this for uh, Austin. Let's see. Okay. Uh, I don't want to reach for my uh, the spice box deck as yet. So let's see. All right, Perry. I'll do three, two, and one, and three, two, and one, and then I'll do an overall separately. So, so we have the swords, the three of swords. Wait, 
beautiful cards, the artwork, three of swords. Then we have the, oh my God, the four of swords. Wow, seriously? He's an Aquarius, so air energy, so this one. And the star card, Aquarius, oh my God, oh my God. Karma's giving me the chills, y'all. Okay. This is for Austin. Austin, he, am I holding it upside down? Yeah, I was. So I'm going to hold it. Austin, he has an ace of swords. I was holding the whole deck upside down, so I'm going to, in reverse, I'm going to straighten them up. So, so um, Austin, he got the Ace of Swords. Gemini and Ace of, oh, this is interesting. Hold on, you guys, you'll be amazed. You folks will be amazed. Then we have the Diablo, right over Leo. Let me just draw the cards and then we'll pick them up. And then we have the Knave of Wands. Not surprised, he's got Sagittarius energy here too, the Wands energy. He's all about taking action, this kid. So let's go back here. I'm gonna lay out the cards and then we'll pick them up and then we'll see like what's what the deal is, okay? Then we have the Magician, okay? Then we have the wheel, okay, let's look at this young man, he has a six of wands, all about action, all about action, taking action, he has a four of pentacles, okay. Mm. very interesting I'm going to say I don't know I, I don't have their pictures uh, Gypsy Girl can you text me their pictures if you get a chance please just so I can, I can, uh, it's so bizarre y'all, Th this is not a joke, because, hang on, hang on, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, and I'm, and I'm so excited, but then again, the energy is like, all over, all around, Okay, and then he's got the Knight of Swords. Oh, I keep forgetting I have my big camera on today. So, let's take it from the top. Um, did she send me a picture? Or not? Okay, so for Perry, he's an Aquarius, but he's got one, two, three Sagittarius cards. Okay, think about that. And uh, this guy, uh, uh, Austin, who is a Sagittarius, has got a lot of Wands energy. And he's got a very important uh, air energy, which is uh, Ace of Swords. So I'm going to say for for uh, Perry, with the Three of Swords, it does talk about betrayal. Now, you might think, okay, these are little kids, like, you know, but then again, kids' friendships, you know, your friend says something wrong or whatever, you may feel betrayed, right? And then he has a Four of Swords and then the Star card. So I'm going to say as far as this kid is concerned, uh, Perry is concerned, he definitely was very sad and heartbroken because he thought that they, whoever he was counting on was going to help. Okay, she sent me their pictures. Give me one second, okay? Uh, let me just, thank you, uh, Gypsy Girl. Tap to load. Are you loading, loading? Okay. Um, so the one on the left is of Austin. And let me see. Okay, so this is what she sent me on the Google link. 
So I'm thinking the blonde kid is Perry. Is that correct? Somebody help me here. Yeah, the teenage energy. Thank you, Gypsy Girl. Is the blonde kid Perry and is the dark haired kid Austin? I don't know who's who. Who's who here? Somebody help me. Is this blonde kid Perry? Or is the blonde kid Austin? You know what? I can just look it up myself, no? Hang on. Let me figure that out. see I don't want to switch that because that thing will go so I won't I won't I won't do that so with with this I'm just waiting okay I just want to confirm so once I start associating the names the energy is hopefully going to be a little bit stronger So whoever this kid is, the first kid, Perry, let's leave the pictures aside because, uh, you know, I, I haven't got a confirmation. I just want to put a name to the face. So there is a betrayal. There is a sense of betrayal, feeling like he was upset with somebody or he felt somebody let him down or, you know, that sort of a thing. And the four of swords says feeling very tired, feeling very tired, feeling like giving up, feeling like he wanted to rest, feeling like he just wanted to kind of uh, dissolve. And then you have the star card, which is his own house. Um, you know, the first house talks about how you present yourself, you know, that sort of a thing. So feeling very betrayed in terms of whoever he relied on, he must have been upset with somebody before he went on board. So I don't know whether the parents were talking about getting divorced or somebody yelled at somebody or he was reprimanded or a friend said something to him or his young girlfriend, whatever, typical teenage stuff. But he also, I feel that Having reached out and called for help, considering that nobody came forth to help, I do believe he felt very, 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 very let down and felt very tired. Between the two of them, I wouldn't be surprised if this kid is the one who passed first. Okay? And then you have the star card, which is his, the first house. It's about his identity. You know, as young as he was, I would say he's the kind of a kid who's all about his identity, right? I mean, think about it. Oh, thank you. She said, thank you, gypsy girl. Okay, so. Okay, this is the Cohen's. Okay, so the Cohen, uh, Cohen is the dark head kid. Is that what you're saying? See, that's the thing, you know, whatever pictures you find on anywhere, it shows both of them together. I, Yes, the dark one is Cohen. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. That's a confirmation. I'm going to say there was something about this kid where they, he, he might have felt um, betrayed, like some kind of a drama going on, felt betrayed and felt like he wanted to give up uh, and felt like... Um, I don't want to have any more part of this. I don't care. Doesn't matter to me anymore. Feeling very, very devastated because he felt that whatever this betrayal was, whatever this drama was going on in his life really affected his identity, might have really affected. Then who am I? Where do I belong? What happens? You know, that sort of a thing. I don't know whether his parents were going through some kind of a situation where they were contemplating divorce or separation or some drama like that. Then you have the magician card. 
the magician card here tells me that there was somebody in his life who he did look up to who he considered to be the kind of a person who could fix everything you know somebody who he could go to and talk to and that sort of a thing but finding that that balance okay and uh, within himself and finding the strength of character maybe a counselor at school maybe somebody he wanted to reach out to somebody and say hey i'm having all these issues can you help me but he couldn't he bring, couldn't bring himself to go over there but also this magician card is not really looking too very good i'm not getting a positive vibe from this it's more a negative vibe and with the temperance card it does uh, talk about finding balance correct so i'm going to say whoever okay whoever it is that he looked up to as somebody who he could go to he could count on fall back on i don't think that individual was very nice to uh, mr cohen to uh, this child perry i don't think he was very nice he struggled to find balance he struggled to find maybe that's the whole uh, you know betrayal type of thing he did struggle to find balance he did struggle to understand why is it that as much as i relied on this person for guidance and for support and my rock my whatever is not being nice to me and read between the lines i'm not going to say anything further there's something very dark and sinister about this magician i'll tell you that right away and then you have the wheel of fortune the wheel of fortune is again a sagittarius card okay as we all know and what does the wheel of fortune say the wheel of fortune talks about things are constantly moving and changing okay but for him i do believe over a period of his life things were constantly moving and changing not necessarily for the better all the time now yes life is such that you can't always be on a roller coaster of a high right there are the ups and downs highs and lows but for him he felt that things were not getting better he felt like he was unable to get out of the path of the wheel he felt like you know uh, even though the wheel had lost a spoke it was still spinning and spinning so fast that he couldn't get out of the way so there's something going on with this child and with his life and his drama there's some kind of a mental and emotional trauma with this child that's for sure so now let's take a look at austin now austin for him being a gemini he has the ace of swords so for him having clarity of thought you know he would have always been the kind of a, a, a kid over here who would think things through all and remember he's a sagittarius and he has the gemini card and over the gemini card is where the ace of swords is he having clarity of thought having taking action taking control that's more like it taking control wanting to do things and then he has a devil card right on top of the leo card now the devil card of course is capricornian energy and it's a earth energy and it's ruled by saturn but for him the sad thing is there is this weird dynamic of of between like i need to think things through before i do something and then being impulsive so there were moments when he would be like had clarity of mind and thought and there were moments where he was just like let's just go man that kind of a kid but then he has a knave of wands now the knave of wands as we know is a page of wands there's always something new this kid was coming up with always a new activity a new creative idea always about action always wanting to take action do something active okay uh, i would say perry is more the deep thinker kind of a thing and this is the more the action they were a good match because they balanced each other as friends and here with him you have the six of wands the knight of swords and the four of pentacles six of wands talks about you know whatever he does competitive i would say this child is whatever he does he wanted to win okay a little bit competitive he always had that happy positive attitude wanting to win wanting to win and taking action and he felt that by going on this little what is this saying okay by going on this little my god this thing had better not blink on me yeah i have internet thank god um by wanting to go wanting to go on this little trip that they were planning he almost felt victorious like yeah i'm taking action i'm finally doing something and then he ends up having the knight of swords now with the knight of swords as we know it does talk about um quick changes happening to him right whatever his actions were the adventure it was this adventure was going to very quickly change his life drastically and as we know clearly it did and four of pentacles okay what is four of pentacles four of pentacles talks about holding on right it talks about uh, a desire for long term security you know it talks about um uh wondering how when where what do we go how do i do how do i 
uh, get out of this situation. It's also a little restrictive card, okay? It is a restrictive card. It's like feeling restricted, like, okay, what do I do now type of an energy. So it's very, very interesting. I do believe they balanced each other in terms of this guy being cerebral and, you know, that sort of a thing, and this guy being all air and fire. Aquarius and Sagittarius. Aquarius is air, Sagittarius is fire. Air always fans the embers into a glowing flame, right? But something about this kid, I'm going to say Perry, is there's something unfortunate that there's a little bit of darkness hanging around him. I'm telling you, these two kids were destined to, to uh, uh, this was destined to happen. My thing is, how in God's world did the parents give them permission? I just saw a quick glimpse of the a picture of that boat that they went in. That's a fairly powerful boat, isn't it? Let me see. One of, oh, that, that's not that. No, that's not even that. No, I lost it. Never mind. Uh, the boat, that seems to be a fairly powerful boat. And you let them go fishing where? Like, what's wrong with you people? So I wonder if... They actually took permission from the parents to go out into the sea or the ocean or they said, we're just going to go here and there. But how do they transport the boat? Somebody must have assisted them in transporting the boat there, right? So I don't know the logistics of it. How did all that work out? So let's do this and one more card for this guy, one more card for this guy. Then I'll take them away and we'll do a general because there are a lot of questions. You have the two of cups. Okay. partnerships okay partnerships and then you have the five of swords oh my god so for him it was all about partnerships i think this kid might have had some drama going on around the house i wouldn't be surprised it's about partnerships and thinking a lot about it he definitely thought of this guy um uh, austin to be buddies i mean you could tell they were really close but for some reason, Austin has a five of swords and he feels like he's been alienated, emotionally alienated. I don't know why he should feel that way. I'm going to pull another card there with the hangman. Look at that. I think the sense of waiting, the sense of waiting, wanting things to happen, waiting, waiting, waiting. There was a lot of waiting going on, waiting to be found, waiting to be rescued, something. Uh... Oh, okay. Okay. So, so uh, the text message I got saying that in 2020, a Palm Beach County a judge ruled the father of Austin Stephanos is not liable in the deaths of his son and his son's friend who disappeared. Okay. So maybe the boat belonged to the Stephanos more than it did the, uh, the uh, Cohen kid. So, but I do believe that whatever might have transpired, it was a sense of, it was feeling a, a little bit of doom, feeling a little bit scared, feeling a little bit lost and waiting, 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 waiting in limbo for something to happen. Uh, I'm going to say for this one, it, it was more like a question of drowning. It's like water drowning. But this kid, Perry Cohen, for him, he had some trauma going on in his life before he even got on that boat and went. So he was already, you know, uh, these things weigh heavily on kids, right? I mean, we don't understand how they pro kids are resilient, but, you know, we don't know how all that works out. So um, there must have been some trauma going on here in his house. We'll delve a little further into it, but I'm going to say that um, one of them for sure, I think, uh, um, passed sooner than the other. Um, I'm going to say uh, uh, Austin, I think, passed sooner first. That's what I'm going to say. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these cards. Oh, hello. Now let's get a better understanding of this. They bit off more than they could chew, these these kids. What is going on over here? Why do I feel like... Give me the overall energy. Overall energy. 
Oh, my energy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six and eight house. Six houses, yeah, and eight houses. Who's in the eighth house? Eight houses for. I'm going to say Stefano's past first. I'm going to say Austin's. I, I hope I'm wrong. I genuinely hope I wrong, I'm wrong. Uh, I hope they're found alive. I hope they're happy. If they're in the Bahamas, I hope they're enjoying themselves in the sun and sand, eating all the seafood they possibly can. I truly hope so. But uh, based on what I'm, the energies I'm getting here and the cards I'm seeing, I do believe that between the two of them, uh, uh, Stephanos would have been the one who uh, weakened first, you know, just so people don't get all up in arms. Uh, he's the one whose energy depleted faster than the other one. So go read into that, okay? Uh, oh, look, Gypsy Girl says, the mom and dad of Austin were not still together when they went out in the boat okay so um i do believe one of the parents knew i think one of the parents must have actually driven them there and said okay you guys go but be careful come back in two hours or three hours or whatever i do believe that happened Okay, let's say who is that person named? Uh, okay. Hey, Melissa. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. I so appreciate your support and your kind words. Thank you, Melissa. Good to see you here, you know. If that magician card pops up again. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh my goodness. I was thinking Taurus. I show you the cards. Oh my goodness, y'all. Oh my goodness. I show you the cards. As I was thinking Taurus, Taurus pops up. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's take this. So the first card I got was Earth. When I was looking at this card, I was saying, finally, Taurus has showed up. Guess who has Taurus active? Wait, did I not? Yeah, the sixth house for Austin Stefanos is Taurus. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sixth house talks about work, health, discipline, and habits, right? And guess who shows up? Taurus shows up right after that, followed by Venus, another Earth sign. I'm telling you, y'all, this hair of mine is so annoying me today. I'm like, girl, what is going on? It looks so silly and stupid, but I'm not going to get up and go fix it and all that. Sorry if I look a little. Then we have Venus, which is Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And then we have the water sign, 24. This would be the sixth house. So sixth house, one, two, three, four, five, six is Taurus for Stephanos and for Perry. One, two, three, four, five, six. This cancer. Okay, six thousand. All right. And then we have the fire sign, the fifth thousand. Look, these kids most probably were having their own struggles, teenage struggles, but one more than the other. Definitely counted on each other. But there was some drama going on there. I'm not going to use either of these decks. Okay, I'm just not. I'm going to take a completely different deck. Uh, I'm going to take the. Uh, 
Marseille deck and we'll do it because I want the energy to be wait let me make sure I got all the cards out yeah those are the whatever I'm going to use a completely different card because I want a completely different energy So hang on a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tenth is Virgo. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tenth is Libra. So Virgo is me and the Libra is me. Yes. So eight thousand the earth sign, which is the earth sign. I'm sorry, I'm just talking to myself. Okay, hang on, I I will There's a very strong, determined, need-driven energy over here, which is all about the earthly needs, which could be the carnal needs, which could be the materialistic needs, carnal needs could be, you know, the physical side of the carnal needs, if you know what I mean. I have to keep it respectful because these, these are two little kids. On the other side, the materialistic needs would be, you know, money, etc., etc. Then you have the opulence, which is like, greed that sort of a thing and w which would also be like excesses such as you know uh, addictions alcohol drug i'm not saying these kids are drug addicts or alcohols that's not what i'm saying so don't misconstrue my words but the energy i'm getting here is very very strongly uh, focusing and pointing towards uh, towards a source that dabbles in delves in manages has some power works in a a very materialistic type of a business or environment that caters to opulence caters to those who have money who can afford it and caters to uh, substances that cause addictions if you know what I mean <laughs> On the other hand, you have water element here, which is six. And the sixth house does talk about discipline habits, but water is Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. But considering they're both, July 24, 2015 is Cancer, right? So then you look at the water, yes, clearly that they were, they were um, picked up, captured, confronted in the element of water so they went from land to water and that's where they were they interacted or came into contact or communication uh, or crossfires but not really as in crossfire as in you know uh, but I'm not surprised if that might have happened uh, because you have the fire sign and you have five now five according to the tarot is um, is you know let's take it uh, five of cups is lost regret, regret feeling abandoned etc five of pentacles talks about uh, feeling isolated etc uh, financial loss etc then five of swords talks about abuse bullies threats that type of a weird relationship uh, aggressiveness and five of wands talks about challenges fives in the tarot is considered to be a little um, harsh of an energy more than anything else okay so i'm going to throw it out there Let me see if the magician pops up. Wait, I better hold the cards. I, I, I'm going to just say, y'all, I'm just going to go for the gold. I believe these kids happened upon some kind of a scenario that they shouldn't have seen and they were basically taken out. That's how it's appearing to me. You know? They might have seen something they shouldn't have seen and they might have been taken out. 
because contentious relations contentious confrontations under fire power under the power of fire fire could be gunfire it could be fire as in real fire flames in the water away from land by a group organization individuals who are all about the money the business aspect of it because this talks earth taurus and venus talks about money business materialistic things so it must they must have seen or happened upon something or somebody's business and they were caught in the middle and it was a question of we can't let them go we got to eliminate them that's how it's appearing to me okay so i hope i'm wrong i truly hope these two kids are sitting somewhere in the bahamas okay i'm not going to say sipping gin and juice because although they were 14 when they went missing and it's been eight years so technically they are adults so i hope they are found alive well happy and you know uh, good but you know he's so quiet i can't believe it he's not moaning and groaning as yet so that's a good thing oh disclaimer this is for entertainment purposes only these are my observations and my opinions please do your own research do your own due diligence and form your own conclusions and uh, yeah this is very interesting y'all for them to just disappear like that it's like you know and it's very easy very very, very easy, easy as harsh as it, it, as it is, is you know this, this is a very very hard visual for any of us you know let alone the parents of my god and the family members can you imagine it's very easy to dispose of somebody in the ocean think about it right so uh, that could have very well happened because this five is really like staring at me because it's saying there was some speculation see five traditionally love affairs speculation kids etc there was some speculation what do we do with these two? Oh, they're just kids but what do we do we can't take that risk so they were either eliminated right then and there and just you know once it goes down into the ocean and the ocean basically has its own house cleaning kind of a crew right if you know what i mean i know i'm not trying to say this to be salacious or or dramatic or anything it's a very hard visual but i'm just you know no disrespect i'm just saying right um. oh is it echoing i don't know wow hey archery yeah, the, I'm telling you, y'all, it's so weird the way energy affects electronics. Like, hey, my max, uh, y'all can try it out yourself. I mean, if you're up to it, I know a lot of people are. I don't want to delve into all that, which is understandable. But, you know, if any of y'all want to communicate with energies and spirits, y'all notice uh, they really drain energy. They're, they drain their own energy. Um, No place on my desk. Is there ever no place? No, never. No. Did I drop something? I sure as hell did. Ah, damn it. Yeah, this is the weirdest thing. I was trying to pick a charm to lay on this Venus card because I think this is a key indication. I'm going to go so far as to say whatever this cruiser, I'm going to say cruiser, but the mode of transportation in the water by the, by the offender, in my opinion, could be green colored. And I was trying to pick up a charm to get a little better understanding as to what in God's world is going on here, that sort of a thing. Get, oh, these are so tiny even. Let me show you. You see that? You see that? So this, that's my little thing, looks like two things to me. One, I, I can't read that because it's, 
it's uh, either hieroglyphs or it's written in a different in Chinese or Asian language. But this to me looks like a kind of a flag, and this to me also looks like the executioner's sword. I'm I'm not kidding you. That was what happened when I was wanting to get some more information regarding that uh, thing, and that that cruise that ship that. A motor transportation bar for the offender is definitely green in color. I'm going to go so far as to say that. And I wouldn't be surprised if it has its own version or interpretation of the name Venus on it. You know, could be anything. Uh, could be initials, could be the exact same name, could be anything. Oh my god. A pair of scissors. Well, it's very interesting the way the energy is, yeah. A little hat thingy. I'm going to pick up two more and I'll stop with that. A little puppy. There's somebody who is very loyal to this, this, this is, these folks are very, very loyal to whatever the organization is. And here you have the timepiece. It's almost like a marine clock, you know. So I'm going to say whoever these people are with the dog symbol showing up, it talks about being very, very loyal to whoever this, this head on show is. Now I'm also going to say with the seven, think about seven. Um, in the tarot is also not necessarily a super super positive kind of an energy. With the seven of uh, uh, cups it talks about uh, too many options, uh, commitment issues. Seven of pentacles talks about you know a lot of hard work and patience to see success. Um, seven of swords talks about theft, betrayal, dishonesty, running away. And seven of wands talks about uh, protecting yourself against competition or defending yourself. So even if you look at it from the seven, number seven in the tarot, there is, it, it kind of shows us that this is all about protecting your interests because you work so hard, you don't want it to all kind of, you know, just dissipate because somebody happened to come by. You know what I mean? So this is definitely done in self-protection and self-defense, meaning we want to protect whatever it is that we are doing. It's crazy. I missed a lot of, uh, okay, echoes still echoing. Yes, a five minutes hat. Yes, yes. I don't know y'all. I don't know y'all because this is the exact same room, so I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's the kids, you know, it's kids, it's kids. It's uh, okay, now let's get into it. I don't think it's the fireman's axe per se, that could be the fireman's hat, but who knows? Who knows y'all? Pages of swords, two of pentacles, ace of wands. Where are you now? So Four of Wands. And then you have 
the, the fool cart, but he popped up in the reverse, so I'm going to take him as, as reverse. Not holding them upright, you know, but those were, uh, yeah, there are a couple that are reverse, I'm just going to leave them there. But see, Ace of Wands is also in the reverse. No, it's in the upright, not the reverse. Correct. So we have uh, the uh, um, uh, Knight of Swords, there are two of Pentacles. Then we have. Uh, why is this popping? Yeah, there's some cards that are in the reverse. Hang on one second, y'all. What's going on here? Yeah. Some cards are in the reverse, and I'm not going to do anything about that. Where are you, man? Yeah. Um, the Page of Swords. Some cards are in the reverse, so we'll just leave it at that. So the Page of Swords, then you have the Two of Pentacles, the Ace of Wands, which is in the reverse, then the Four of uh, Wands, and then the Fool card in the reverse. So let's take a look. Page of Swords, that talks about, you know, these kids must have been curious. It talks about prying eyes and being very curious and wanting to say, hey, what's going on? Let's go see. Or, you know, maybe we should call and say what we saw, you know, thinking about things like that. Then you have the Two of Pentacles and the Two of Pentacles is, oh, we better stop for a second. We better figure out, you know, whether we should be calling, who should we be calling. Let's wait and see what's going on. Then with the Ace of Wands reverse, it's saying that uh, all of a sudden they felt like their power was gone. So there is a possibility power was gone as in they might have lost fuel. They might have lost connectivity over the cell phone. Maybe they couldn't call. They were wanting to call somebody and say, hey, guess what we saw? And they were contemplating and they finally decided to call and they couldn't get through because they either lost power, they were too far out of the sea, there was no signal, etc., etc. And then you have the four of wands. And they tried very depth, very much wanting to go back home, wanting to go reconcile with the family and wanting to go reconcile with the loved ones. In other words, they wanted to turn around and go. Unfortunately, they couldn't because the adventure came to an end right then and there. So I'm going to say these kids must have tried to call somebody or reach out to somebody and say, maybe we should call and tell somebody what we saw. Maybe we should call and see, say, hey, guess what we saw. Come help or we are heading back or something. But unfortunately, their, their journey, their little adventure was cut short because they saw too much of something they were never supposed to see in the first place. These kids, I think they kind of saw, happened upon something they shouldn't have. That's basically what transpired, basically. Then we have the uh, the Empress in the reverse, okay? The Empress in the reverse. I'm going to take these cards as they come up reverse or upright, however. Then we have the Five of uh, Swords in the reverse. Mm, let's do that. Then we are going to take the Ten of Cups in the reverse. Oh my God. Then we take the three of wands in the upright. Okay, so um, so just so you know, for a lot of y'all who don't know how do I differentiate, well, the green is traditionally wands and the blue is the air sign. So that's how it goes. And blue is uh, air signs of swords. Wow, come back here, buddy. These cards decided to slide off. I'm going to hold on to these because I, I think there's a message here for us. So with the uh, Empress card in the reverse, it's telling me that, you know, as you know, the Empress is, is typically the feminine energy. It, it talks about um, Venus. It talks about uh, mom, family, going home, you know, all the luxury and that sort of stuff. Also pregnancy, but pregnancy doesn't, doesn't apply here. It's, I do believe, I do believe this, in somebody here, whoever it is, who was trying to reach out, or could have been both, must have tried to reach out to a female in the family or in law enforcement, or some female must have tried to reach out to a female but couldn't get through. Because of lack of communication, no fuel, no energy, too far out of the ocean, no signal. This individual tried to reach out to a mother, a mother figure, an older female in the family, and they couldn't reach out to. Then you have the uh, 
five of swords in the reverse. Now the five of swords talks about violence and this, that and the other in the reverse. It's like this individual was very afraid, okay, um, of, of where this violence would take it, this individual. Was very afraid of the threat and the violence, okay. But also with the ten of cups in the reverse, uh, it's saying that this individual was very afraid of what the mom would say, like, how dare you go out, you went out without my permission, that kind of violence also possible, no, not necessarily physical violence. Physical violence in terms of what was happening right there in front of them, but also in terms of anger, air, anger, intellectual, cerebral, speaking words. So you might have been afraid of what mom was going to say and say, how dare you, I mean, I didn't give you permission to go out, who gave you permission to go out? So that the dynamic was going on and Ten of Cups, Ten of Cups talks about what is Ten of Cups, the family contentment, total love and support, in the reverse says, kind of felt that the mom was not going to support, whoever it is, and I'm not saying it is the mom, it could have been a mother, it could have been a female, it could have been an older sister, aunt. whoever it is that they were reaching out to her, it could have been a female in the police department or whatever, I'm not laying blame on any individual, but this person was afraid and realized that, oh my God, I cannot reach out, I cannot communicate, I cannot talk for whatever reason, maybe because that, that person couldn't be reached or maybe, you know, they couldn't get through or maybe that person was unavailable, that sort of a thing, any number of those scenarios. And then you have the three of wands. Three of wands talks about teamwork, commerce, expansion and travel. So then when they realized that they couldn't get through for help, they figured out we have to do something and figure a way out. We have to teamwork. Let's figure out a, a course of action that we can both take. Now these three cards, remember I said they slipped out, I was hanging on to them. So I'm going to see what they are. The first one is uh, Six of Pentacles. Okay? Six of Pentacles, I'll leave that there. The second one is, uh, oh, there are four cards. The sun card, okay, it shows two little kids, right? Um, then you have the magician. Oh my God, I can't stand it. What did I say if that magician showed up, y'all, seriously? And then you have the pope, okay? The two is the high priestess here, it says the pope. So now let's take a look at this. Six of Pentacles is finances. Pentacles is finances, right? It talks about give and take, exchanging, okay? It talks about bartering, it talks about doing business, it talks about negotiating, I'm going to give you this for this, or I need this to give you this. Y'all, this to me, the way it appears is a slam down, okay? Again, I'm sure I'm going to get all the cuckoos come out of the woodwork, but. The way it appears to me, remember these are my opinions, my observations, do your own research, do your own due diligence, form your own conclusions, this is for entertainment purposes only. I do believe these kids might have happened across some kind of a, I don't know, maybe a drug dealer, or maybe somebody was offing somebody, and it was like a business for them, and they happened upon it, and everything went downhill from there. And they must have seen that they must have tried to reach out to somebody, primarily could have been a mother or a mother figure because it's Empress card, and they couldn't get through to that person for whatever reason, just sheer sure luck uh, or just the way the universe worked or whatever. Um, and uh, they couldn't communicate, they were also afraid they, they might get yelled at, saying that, who gave you permission to go out like this? What is wrong with you kids? So that fear was there at the back of the mind. And also there was some violent kind of a situation that was going on right in front of them. And then Ten of Cups that completely losing emotions, completely feeling overwhelmed, completely feeling like, oh my God, what happens now? Like completely feeling like help is not coming or what do I do? Like total like breakdown of emotions. And then they had to pick themselves up and say, Let, listen, let's get a grip. Let's uh, come up with a plan where we can work together as a team and get the heck out of here. But it was not to be because if these kids had gotten away and they had got back to land and contacted whoever they did, they could most definitely have cost whatever was going on a lot of money and a lot of loss. But with the sun card, the sun card, as we know, rules Leo. Now, didn't we have Leo here? Um, for Perry Cohen, his, oh my God, he seems to need my glasses. Uh, his seventh house is Leo. Okay, so Perry, if your seventh house is Leo, uh, wait, you're an Aquarius, right? So one, okay, seventh house is Leo. It talks about contracts, etc. And for Sagittarius, that is Austin, he's a Sagittarius, and for him, Leo is a sister sign. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine thousand talks about, you know, uh, uh, intellect, distance, travel, higher education, father, etc. But I also want to say that for both of them, they might have been saying, look, we get out of this or we don't. We get out together or we don't. Right? I know this is a long shot, but we have to figure a way to get out of this. We both go down or we both go out. Get out. So it was almost like a team. And then you have the magician. This magician is not getting a good energy from the, from the very first uh, first time. There are a lot of readings where every card, every card with the tarot deck, there are sometimes the energies uh, kind of point to a, to a negative whatever aspect. Sometimes it's a positive aspect and sometimes it's neutral. But the magician does talk about you know, somebody who is uh, powerful, who has the ability to make decisions and whatever decisions he or she makes, you know, here is depicted as a male, but it could be a female. He or she, whatever decision this individual makes, is, is taken as a law and it is uh, it is carried out. So there is no going and saying, uh, if, if this person says, okay, go do, give me 20 sit-ups, you do not ever ask, why 20, why can't I do 90? You never, whatever the decision this person makes, that's that. You just hush and get it done. So there is somebody of authority over there who is calling the shots. And then you have two, which is the high priestess, okay? Now two, here again, it's, yeah, it's de uh, depicted as a male or female here. I can't tell whether this one has a mustache or not, but anyway. The high priestess, ruled by the moon, it talks about things will remain hidden. It talks about something that is hidden, secretive energy around this whole thing that went down. It's all about things that were supposed to transpire under the shroud of, of uh, secrecy and the shroud of darkness, and it is going to remain so. But, hang on one second. Uh, all right, let's sit you down there. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, see? Four. Oh my God. Okay, so we have the hands of the clock. How do I even hold this thing? See? The hands of the clock. Time stands still. We have heartache, total loss. We have oh god, this is driving me nuts. Hang on one second. This basically talks about yoga but it's also a retreat okay it's trying to be flexible and how to comprehend or try to be flexible in understanding the situation but unable to then we have the wheel right this is the what you call look i am not a seafaring person so i'm just going to call it a steering wheel for the boat See if anything, I know you all will be laughing and say, Kita, it has a particular name for it. Well, I don't know, it's a steering wheel, okay? I'm just saying. And then we have the dove, right? Bringing peace. Is it a dove or a swallow? It appears that the first thought that came to my mind was a dove. I know there's a meaning for the swallow. What? Hang on one second, okay? Hang on one second. Okay, think about this. So I had to look it up. Uh, the spiritual meanings of... Uh, so the spiritual meaning, so it says... Uh, Look at this. Why is the swallow a symbol of hope? This led many sailors to start embracing the swallow as a symbol of hope and the successful completion of a long voyage. 
Seeing swallows was a sign that they were nearly sure as these birds never traveled far out to the sea and so motivated the sailors on the final miles of their journey back to the mainland. Wow. I first thought it was a dove. It's like peace and acceptance. And then I immediately thought of the swallow because I honestly couldn't tell. So take it for what it means, a dove or a swallow. So I'm not surprised. I mean, if it is a swallow, it really ties into this whole marine theme, right? I mean, isn't that crazy? Oh my God. Crazy. I'm going to ask a question and then I'm going to kind of... But I also feel with this high priestess... There's somebody who's trying to look and research, trying to look and research, and almost like trying to find a loophole through the legal system or the legal mumbo jumbo to get to some information. That's what I'm sensing from this card. Uh, yeah, the swallow, isn't it funny? Like, of all the birds, I would think of the dove or the swallow. I mean, I, I, I honestly couldn't, like, one more card. Let me see, see if I'm on. Three of Cups in the reverse. My question was, will these kids be found? And in the reverse says, no celebration, lack of celebration. So that's what I'm going to say with that. Now I'm going to look up at, oh my God, we're already an hour and a half into this. So hang on, let me get all this put away. And then we can continue down this path of, I'm going to put away all these decks because I think I'll stick to my uh, Marseille deck. I'm liking it. Give me one second. Okay, this is okay. I don't know where that came from. So let me take a break and. Uh, hey Donna, thank you. I just saw you, Donna. <laughs> just looked up at the screen. So uh, thank you for being here. Oh. That boat, they shouldn't have been allowed to take that boat so far out into the water. And without adult supervision, it's not like they were 16 or 17, they were 14, y'all. Seriously? Yeah, that I didn't know, Delvin. I didn't know that they left. The boat was rediscovered on March 18, 2016, about 100 miles from the Bermudas. So it's, they say, why did they not take the boat when they first found it? Doesn't that sound a bit fishy? And who found the boat? And why a uh, 19-foot uh, boat is really small to be out to the ocean. And we're two little kids. You see, see, here's what I say. Let, let me give you a little bit of an example. So I used to ride super bikes. And by super bikes, I mean the Hayabusa. Now, for those of you who know a little bit about, uh, 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 you know, uh, super bikes and Hayabusa, etc., it was at one point in time, it, it was a Suzuki brand. It was the fastest um, uh, bike that you could use, like street bike or whatever. It's one of those big guys, big boys, okay? It's, it's, a, it's a big bike. Let me just, 1290cc or something like that, or something close like that. So I used to ride that bike, and uh, I enjoyed it. And uh, my older son, uh, he is... Uh, definitely much much taller than me he was always a tall i think he's close to about is he close to six five yeah so uh and when he was 17 or something like that uh, we had left the keys and you know i was busy doing something come to find out this little boy he takes the bike and he goes out on a ride and i was out coming home from work and i got a call and 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 uh somebody uh, one of our friends called and said hey uh riding your bike and I go what do you mean who was riding the bike the bike said oh it's in the garage the keys are right here and uh, she said no go go check and I was like did somebody steal the bike so I go check in the key box you know uh, the keys went there and I was like oh nobody could have got into that key box because you had to be inside the house so if you somebody has taken the key box it's somebody within the house who has access to the house or somebody stepped into the house you know they were not supposed to and then they grabbed the key so i was like oh and uh this this lady she I mean, a friend she said uh uh tall you know 
well-built uh, guy and this is the color t-shirt he was wearing and she, I don't remember which t-shirt Karan was wearing, I couldn't tell you but she said the name or whatever, you know how these kids wear those t-shirts with those things and I was like, oh yeah, that's uh, my son and she said, yeah, and I was like, oh my God. So he came back home and he got into big trouble, okay? And he's like, well, mom, you're half my size. Of course, I was much slimmer then than I am now. And he goes, you ride the bike, why can't I ride it? And that's when I had to explain to him, it has nothing to do with how physically built you are. Like, you know, whether you're tall and strong or short and skinny or what, it doesn't matter, okay? It's the maturity of the person who handles these kind of uh, powerful equipment, motorized vehicles, automated stuff that matters. It's how mature you are. What kind of mature decisions will you be able to take when it comes to a situation where it's like, oh my God, you know, the decision you make then in that split second is going to determine life and death, right? So, and, and he's like, mom, I can make those decisions. I said, son, I'm not saying that you're not capable, but you still don't have that many hours you know, road miles on it, and you still haven't learned how to manage. He's like, I'm a good rider. I said, I know you're a good rider. You're my son. I know you can ride bikes very well, better than a lot of people your age. But it's not you. It's the other people on the freeways, right? So you have to be very, very careful. That's what I think. These kids may have been taught, trained, etc. You want to go out, baby? Sorry, give me a second, y'all. You want to go outside? Okay. Give me time. All right. Are they? Would you let him out, please? Thank you. I think by now everybody knows <laughs> Bernie's routine, right? Sometime during the middle of a live stream, he has to be let out and he has to be let back in. Thank you for understanding and for your patience. So it's it's they may have been taught well. They may have had a lot of years going fishing and uh, driving the boat, but I'm sure it was always with an adult around them. But when you are put in an element in an environment which is beyond your scope of maturity, then. Clearly, you are incapable of making appropriate decisions. Heck, a lot of adults can't make the right decisions when you are in a stressful situation. How then can you accept, uh, expect kids to make that decision? Now, having said that, I'm not saying that kids are not capable. I'm just saying, you know, you understand what I'm trying to say, right? So, anyway, uh, that's my spiel. Okay, uh, uh, maybe their boat was in distress. Yeah, that's a possibility, auntie. Um, that would rule out, oh, I missed it, oh, I missed it, shoot, that would rule out, they were not prepared for the push. yeah, they were not prepared, you know, because that would, okay, so Karaja says, yeah, because that would rule out a lot of things running out of gas, yeah, absolutely, you know, and if you're so far away from land that there's no signal, then what happens, oh, rock and rubber, my pleasure, okay, uh, I suppose. <laughs> oh, the echo is gone? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. The echo is gone. Yeah, I mean, I was like so mad at him. And I mean, I mean, it was like, and, and that day I was like, I'm done. The very next day I was like, I put up the bike for sale and it was gone. And then he comes back home from school and he goes, Mom, where's the bike? I said, sold it. And he was so upset. I said, yeah, you should have asked. And you didn't. So basically, you proved to me that uh, I couldn't trust you. Uh, you know, all you had to do is because, well, if I had called you, you would have said yes. You would have said no. I said yes, I would have said no. But that would have been the right thing to do. So anyway, and of course, my, many years later, he got his own and he rode it for a little bit. And I was so upset with him because it's like, you know, and uh, he, now he doesn't, he's got his own big car, etc. So he's past that bike stage. Um, I saw a picture of the boys and one of the boys, Perry gives me a dark feeling. Now sure if, not sure if I describe what I feel, but like something is off. Yeah. Are you talking about the dark haired young man? I agree. Uh, kids almost always automatically see adults as a source of help too. That's true too, you know. Yeah, they're not mature enough to make, uh, you know, spur of the moment decisions that would definitely, you know, uh, 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 affect their life or death, right? So what can you say? It's crazy. So any specific questions regarding this case, y'all? 
I did ask, I did ask, will they be found? And I got the Three of Cups in reverse that says no celebration, which means uh, I don't think they'll be celebrating. So if you all have any questions for this case, ask away, everybody. Oh my goodness, it took me this long to realize. Sorry, y'all, no disrespect. Uh, uh, okay, nobody has any questions for me? What? No, how come y'all don't have questions? Please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, uh, hit the bell icon so you get notified of, uh, of all the other videos I put up. And here I go into a little bit of a spiel. Um, feel free to subscribe uh, to on my website. Becoming a member is free. And, you know, when I have little draws like this where I say I'll, I'll give you one month free or whatever, then, you know, without your membership, I can't assign any videos. I do also have subscription. The subscription is, you know, week ahead readings for a whole year. It's about, I think, 30 bucks. So it comes down to about less than 60 cents per week. And you have the year ahead readings. Of course, these are general. If you go on my website, www.therealtarot1123.com, you can see all the different kinds of personal readings I do. It's a very easy to navigate website. You go pick and choose the kind of reading you want. It tells you how much you pay for it. It gives you the opportunity to pick and choose the date and time for the reading. You put in your information, make the payment, you get a confirmation, and then we get on Zoom. Now, there are two options. If you want the recording ver recorded version of the Zoom to be sent to your email, then that's an additional cost. But if you don't want it recorded, then you, know, you have those two options. Um, and also uh, feel free to visit my other channel it's called the real astrology 1123.com where I do a weekly monthly and year ahead astrology uh, readings uh, and it's only astrology unlike here this I touch a little bit on astrology but mainly it's uh, tarot there I only do astrology weekly monthly and year ahead maybe once in a great while I might do an astrology chart reading for anybody I haven't yet decided who I haven't done that as yet I might maybe think about doing a uh, once a month a live stream on the astrology channel again right now my calendar is a bit topsy-turvy so I don't want to make that commitment and have to change I'm kind of still settling into all of this stuff that's going on here so please bear with me and as far as your astrology is concerned, uh, uh, you, I also do uh, astrology charts like your birth charts, solar return, year ahead, for couples, family dynamics, you know, uh, uh, vocation, your career, if you're wanting to move somewhere else, if you're concerned about a child or an adolescent, uh, you know, uh, go and have a look at the different options. Send me an email. My astrology email is therealastrology1123 at gmail.com and I'll tell you the pricing, etc. Same thing with uh, my uh, um, tarot. The email is therealtarot1123 at gmail.com. Okay, I'm done with my marketing spiel. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you for being patient. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's see. There were some questions. Uh, oh my god, Alia, you're always kind. Are they at peace, Susie Q? Are they at peace? I don't think so. I'm not sensing it, but let's see. Are they at peace? I'm not sensing. Oops. Are they at peace? I don't sense it. I don't think it was a good uh, thing for them. So we have the King of Cups, right? So this talks overwhelming emotions. It's a lot of uh, overwhelming emotions. I don't think they are at peace. I'm going to put two more cards. I want clarification. Oh, he's doing fine carriage house. He just came back from pee, -pee. Let me let him in. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, come on, I hear you. Come on. No, are you giving him a treat? I don't know, he's wagging his tail. I, I, I thought he was going to come in. Maybe not. Okay, I'm just going to shut the door that if he's not coming. Okay. He saw his dad go into uh, the laundry room. We have all these the boxes of his treats and all set on top. Hopefully he can't get to them, but being such a big dog, he can knock anything over and get whatever he wants. But so far he hasn't gone for the uh, milk cookies, you know, um, those dog bone cookies. There are other cookies and treats that he's, we had hidden in the laundry closet. He knows how to open the door. He's pushed everything aside and had at it. I mean, this, 
So anyway, uh, he's doing fine. He's he's doing much better. My health is doing better. Thank you, Carriage House. Thank you for asking. I hope you're doing well too. Uh, yes, Debbie, I will do it. Give me one second. Let me finish this, okay? Uh, I'm going to get two clarifiers for this. And then we have uh, the uh, Queen of Pentacles in the reverse. And then we are having the uh, Five of uh, Wands. Oh my God, y'all. There is no peace. There is no peace. They don't have peace. There's a lot of overwhelming emotions. And the emotions between um, amongst themselves, their souls, their energy. But also, I'm going to say, the parents are all at war with each other. Look, five of wands. Five of wands does talk about challenges and obstacles. The both sets of parents, parents for this kid and parents for this kid, they are all at loggerheads with each other. There is no peace any which way you look at it or cut it. There is no peace. Okay. Uh, I see only, what? Only eight likes? 42 people watching and only eight likes? What's going on? Come on, y'all. Give me a thumbs up. Mark is doing well, Karajas. Thank you for asking. He's doing well. Thank you. Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe there's a lag. Okay, buddy. Oh, my God. Excuse me. Oh, God. You're way too much drama. Come in. You are so, so needy. Did you get your cooking from your daddy? You chomped it up and now you're here, huh? No, boy. Hey, I'm sitting right here. Right here, two feet away from you. Look at me. I got eyes at the back of my head. Do you know what he's doing? You know that box that I showed you, I took all the goodies that Suzy Q sent uh, for me? It's sitting right there. He comes straight in and he's trying to repair it. Like I'm sitting right here. Beyond my comprehension. Do you find that yummy? Oi. Hello. I may as well stop my kibble for you. It's cheaper to feed you paper, right? Now he won't make eye contact with me. <laughs> He's such a shyster. Why weren't the objects like the iPhone on the boat thoroughly checked by the police before being handed over to the family? There's some fishy stuff going on, y'all. Clearly, you know. Hang on one second. This is very interesting. Hey, Sherilyn. Good to see you. Oh, congratulations, Sherilyn. You are VJ. What does you are VJ? I don't know what that means. Uh, wait. A person who was flying a small aircraft believed he saw the boat capsize. One boy had his hands in the air. Unfortunately, they lost sight of them after calling for help. His daughter took a picture. Oh, my God. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Scout Inquirer says, Why was Austin's father hesitant to hand over the found cell phone to the authorities? And was he worried there was something on the cell that would incriminate? Could be. Could be. Okay. Okay. I don't know, you think that they would they would want to investigate, right? To find out. I'm telling you, Delvin, this boy has some kind of and now he wants to Oi. You have to mischief again. Wait, wait, something, something, something. As a child, did spirits come to you? Did it get more intense as you became a young lady? My daughter has always talked about Spirit, she tells me a lady follows me and likes when I get mad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have had some interesting experiences. Wait, uh, she's becoming of age and last she told me my aunt who passed was with her helping a process. But this morning bus driver called and daughter having chest pain when I asked if it was because of something. What? <laughs> That's a standard dialogue every mother says. I have eyes at the back of my head. 
Oh, wow, that's interesting. I don't know, Courtney, what your daughter's experience was. Pandora Spock says, if the boat was capsized, how could they have found the cell phone on the boat? So, Courtney, I'm not doing any personal questions right now. So, we're just limiting it to the subject at hand. And uh, so, I can't help you. If you want a reading on that, get in touch with me and maybe we can do uh, some sort of an astrology or tarot reading to help you with that. Carrie Finley says yes. Uh, question mark. Okay, so let's do a quick reading for um, for uh, Johnny Depp because we know that drama that's going on, correct? Uh, on the news. Oh my God, that Amber Heard is a piece of work, y'all. Are you all ready for this? Are you all ready? She's a crazy psycho dingbat. Oh my goodness. Aracelli says five stages of grief is denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. So family's arguing is due to anger, needing. Yeah, that's true. That's true too. If the boat was capsized, how could they have found the cell phone? That you think that was a plant, right? Maybe the people who took those kids realized, oh shoot, we have the cell phone. They could have tracked the cell phone and seen where the kids were, and they must have hurriedly gone and put the cell phone back on the boat. Or who knows, or maybe this is all Baham Burke and people are cooking up stuff. So who knows what's going on. Uh, oh, she's a nut. I mean, she is, she is one of those women who will, I put her on the same, uh, uh, she and what's her face's name? What's her face's name? Uh, uh, Henry's uh, megalomaniac, psycho, cuckoo wife, you know, the two of them, uh, you know, who Henry from across the pond, his wife, his psycho uh, wife, uh, no wonder they got rid of her from across the pond. They didn't want to have anything to do with her. Uh, thanks, you folks. You know, you sent her this side and now we have to deal with her psycho self. We thought we'd get rid of her, but you all bounced her back. So, on a side note, <laughs> she, um, uh, Henry's wife and Johnny Depp's ex are, I mean, the one and the, yeah, I don't want to mention her name. That's why I, I try not to use their names. Yeah, exactly. Mental, mental, uh, mental marker. Oh. Johnny is a is a different kind of guy, you know. Yeah, Crystal Pink, that's who we are, I'm saying. Johnny is a different kind of a guy. Now, am I going to say he's a saint and this and that and, you know. Uh, here, let me take a quick look. I, I'll do this really quickly for you all, okay. Uh, uh, oh, I forgot how to spell his name. J-H-O. Uh, there we go. Let me do this quick thing, okay, you guys. Uh, I'll do it here on this. Oh. Uh, to, to do hang on one second okay if you're patient with me let me see if i can get his date of birth uh john christopher depp three i didn't know that so june 9th 1963 and ding dong ding a lang uh Let's see her. I can't stand that chick, man. I mean, you can tell she's such a manipulative, like just a, oh my God, I can't. Amber, Laura. She's the kind of a person who has no scruples, who has no problem using anybody, male or female. That's who she is. April 22nd, 1986. So hang on one second, okay? Let me quickly do, oh, I better be careful or I'll click out of that. Uh, yeah, exactly, uh, Johnny Depp, hang on. Uh, hang on, buddy. So, um, six, wait, 10 and 9, 19, 19. 1925, 25, 31, 31, 34. So 34 is going to give me a 7. And June 9th, I always want to check. June 9th is a Gemini. So he's a Gemini. Hang on, okay? 
and April 22nd, the psycho chick. April 22nd puts her at Taurus. Oh my God. Hang on one second, Taurus. So that's four. Plus four is eight. Plus 10 is 18. 24, 32, 34. <laughs> no, let me check one more time. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight and eight is 16. 16, 26. No, how did I do that? Hang on. So let's figure uh, 10, 19, 19. That's 7, correct. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Two is five. Okay, five. Yeah. All right. That's five. And so let's see. Hang on, y'all. I'm going to try and be quick. Okay, John. Christopher. T. Six. Dip five seven seven and three we leave that as three and for her one four two three R Laura A M B E R Laura 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 where are you? Um, Heard. All right. Let me do this math really quick, okay? So, 10, 15, 19, 20, 21, 24, 25, 35, 38, 48, 49, 50, 50, 60, 65, that would be 11. And here we have um, uh, 11, 19, 20, uh, 31, 40, 50, 50, 58, 58, 65, 70, 79, 79, uh, 87, 87, 91, 91, 96, 96. Okay. That'll be 2. And, and. Well, oh, well, that'll be 11 too. Wow, okay. So he's a Gemini and his 11th house and 7th houses are active. 11th house talks about like-minded people, groups and friends. 7th house, friends, marriage, partners, contracts and relationships. And for her, she's a Taurus. 11th house and 5th house are activated. So 11th house is again like-minded people, groups and friends, contracts and, uh, you know, partnerships and marriage. And 5th house is love affairs, speculation. Oh my God, she is a cuckoo. This, how in God's world did they even last this long is my question. Like, how did that happen? Wait, she tried to blame it on the dog? Yeah, she's a psycho man. She's a, it's all crazy. Okay. She's just, she's a person who, God forbid, the man she ends up with. I mean, he had better be one strong dude. Like one strong dude is not going to fall for her charms or he better watch out. But the way I look at things is, again, these are my observations, my opinions. Please do your own research, do your own due diligence, form your own conclusions. This is for entertainment purposes only. She's going to be the kind of woman that these rich, powerful men will be attracted to her, but not attracted to her enough to have lasting relationships with her she's going to be tossed around quite a bit 
that's all. All this thing about wanting to go and adopt and all that, she's trying to establish that, you know, you know how a lot of Hollywood people, you know, uh, I'm not saying all of them are doing it for the sake of uh, sensationalism or uh, PR or uh, marketing or a public uh, publicity stunt, although I'm sure a few of them are doing that. Some of them do have good intentions and it's, it's, it's you know, we can toss the ball around and figure out who is doing it for the right reasons and who is doing it as a PR stunt. But for her, let me assure you, it's a PR stunt. She wants to build this image for herself. It's almost like she's trying to create a, a image for uh, Amber Heard. And she's going about it the wrong way because she may think she's doing it for the right reasons and it's all going to work in her favor. I don't. I would be very surprised if that child continues to stay with her. If she has adopted, somebody can confirm. I know I read that uh, she was adopting or thinking of adopting. Um, uh, someone said those peanut swallies were too big to come out of the dog. Oh my God, don't tell me she pulled around the house. What a nasty thing. But I would be surprised. But um, yeah, she's the kind who has no, no, she, she'll vacillate. Oh, don't be so sure because Crystal Pink, even though there was no pre uh, prenup, and she may think she's got Johnny Depp, but when he turns around and files a defamation suit, he can get all that and some more back. So, you know, uh, yeah, see, she has a surrogate baby that is rumored to be with the guy trying to take over Twitter. What? I don't know, y'all. I mean, I, I, exactly, exactly. Thank you, Scott and Quire. Very well said. I would be surprised if the child is taken away from her. So let's get a reading for Johnny Depp and see. So he, Johnny Depp, is a uh, Gemini, I said, correct? No, what is he? June 9th. Wait, how did I get to Gemini? Hang on one second. June 9th. Yeah, he's a Gemini. So if it's 7,000, 7,000 for Gemini is, one, wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7,000 Sagittarius. So, and then uh, 4,000. 4,000 is Virgo. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised because whatever this relationship issue is, marriage contracts, relationships, etc., um, is, is very emotional for him. Very, very emotional. He takes it very seriously. He's a big old softy, y'all. I mean, he's not a saint. I'm sure he's had his dabbling in substances and all that, but whatever. But Johnny Depp is not the kind of a guy who I would ever think he's vicious or, you know, volatile or, you know, prone to temper tantrums or violence. I, he, he, no, nah, no. Nah. He's very quick in his thinking in terms of he could change his mind often and be very mercurial, but also very cerebral, has the adept, uh, ability to adapt to situations very easily, but he is not the kind of a guy who I would ever construe as being, uh, um, at least based on this, uh, being um, aggressive. So we do have, who's this guy now? The sun card in the reverse, right? We have the sun card in the reverse this one I was trying to turn over this is the ace of cups again in the reverse well this is upside this is reverse uh, wait 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 he said that the box where I don't know what Arachali is talking about because I wasn't paying attention Uh, and you have the uh, uh, Queen of Wands in the reverse. Wow, a lot of reverses for this. He's over and done with the psycho chick. And you have the Seven of Wands in the upright. So one more card for him. And you have the Six of Swords. Oh my God, he's so over her. The Sun card in the reverse. The Sun card, as we know, rules Leo. And the Sun talks about happy times, expansions, new horizons in the reverse, no more in terms of love and the offer and proposal and, and uh, offer of love and uh, of emotions to this individual that is Queen of Wands. She's showing up as a Queen of Wands over here. He is completely withdrawn. No more feelings, no more affections for her. He has come. See, one thing I'll tell you with Johnny, uh, he's the kind of a guy who loves deeply. But once it, something switches off and he's over, it's over. It, there is no going back. Then he has the ability to turn the tables and he can do that. As we see, case in point, he's doing that. 
But when he falls in love, he falls in love really hard, very passionate, very trusting, very giving. There's almost an element of innocence over there, very too trusting, too innocent, too giving. Right? All in 100% within uh, uh, the span of 0 to 10 seconds, that type of a thing, intense. But it takes a lot to push him, but once that he, he turns at the corner there, then there is no going back. Then you see a different side to his character, which is syst ability to systematically deconstruct whatever. Okay? And then you have the Seven of Wands. And the Seven of Wands talks about, now he's all about protecting himself against whatever competition. And competition could be his protecting himself against his career because career is where he's being, comp uh, there's competition, like who gets a role and who doesn't, right? So now he's taking necessary steps to protect his career, protect himself from whatever drama is going on, moving on. And then you have the Six of Swords. He's going to completely destroy this chick and he's going to move on. He's going to move on. He'll be fine. He's over and done with. He's so over and done with this cycle. And then you have the king of uh, uh, pentacles in the reverse. Okay. Then you have the lover's card in the reverse. He was a provider in that relationship. And then you have the Seven of Swords in the reverse, okay? So what, the, and I'm going to pull one more card and we'll be, we'll be done. And then I'll pull cards for her. Then it's the Ten of Pentacles. So he was a provider in this relationship. He was the one who was providing financial support as well as emotional support. And the Lover's card is in reverse. That's a Gemini card. So he is like completely, he's like, no, no more love, no more, you know, yin and yang, no more, you know, none of that. There is... It's all over and done with. And then when you have the seven of swords in the river, seven of swords talks about, you know, theft, betrayal, dishonesty, running away. And, and it's like no more running away. No more running away. It's all over. It's like he has completely turned the corner and done a switcheroo. And now she does not know what to do because guess what? He ends up with the ten of pentacles. So I think he's going to win this defamation case. I think he'll get some money back from that cycle. Whoever she goes to, she's just going to utilize them. She's just going to um, uh, use them for a best uh, to her advantage, and then she's going to dump them. I'm going to say this even before I put the cards. What I envision her is 10, 15 years down the line, you're going to find some kind of a, 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 a what do you call those mugshots? will float around in one of those magazines, you know, somebody who looks all totally bizarre and, you know, uh, running, out, um, what you call mascara and messed up and looking like totally under the influence, it'll be her. You watch 10, 15 years down the line. Don't be surprised if you see that. She is a manipulator. I'm, I'm, wait, her team keeps calling on naming his friends to confirm his drug abuse. That kind of exposes those friends drug use is a payback for Johnny exposing her sister you see when you when you know that you have nothing else that's when you start grasping at straws and reaching so far out to try and pull something in to be able to make because it's deflecting right you're like oh don't look at this let's look at that so what if he said he was paying out of his pocket right he wasn't paying uh, she wasn't supporting his habit in fact it's the opposite he was supporting her financially and even if he was he still i don't think uh, appropriately she donated oh yeah that but yeah that we know so mm. Who's playing, who's wiping the floor with her? I don't know. She lose. Oh, yeah. I, I don't see that child being in her custody for long or she having access to that child. Um, no, he's, he, you know, he's the kind of a guy who's like, uh, you know, oh, well, whatever. Let me, non-confrontational. As much as he's a Gemini, he's like, oh, let's just kind of get on, like, figure it out and part ways. 
But if you push him, if you push him against the wall, he is not, he's not confrontational, but if you push him against the wall and he feels like he's in a corner, he is not the kind of a guy who's going to back down, but he will do it in a very strategic, systematic way. He's not the kind of a guy who's going to go crazy and, you know, you'll find him, uh, you know, middle of the night banging on your door and say, you better come out or else he's not the kind of guy who does all that stuff. But very, very uh, systematically, strategically, he'll go around breaking you down. Very smart. Hats off to him. That's how it should be done. You know, get them and they won't even know it's coming. And he'll do it. He's very capable of that. For him, now, it's, it's not so much a question of, like, here's the thing. He knows his reputation has been faltered. But now it's a matter of principle. I am just going to make it my goal to prove who she really is. Okay? And it doesn't matter if my career was hit. Screw it up, my, part of my language. If my career doesn't pick back up, of course, that's not going to happen. His career is going to bounce right back. Don't worry about that. This is just a bad phase he's going through. But even if my career is going to take a dent, that's fine. I will deal with it. But I just want to prove a point. That's the trajectory he's on. When when somebody like him, considering his, his energies and his chart, starts on that route, there's no stopping him. It's It doesn't matter how long it takes. He'll see it through its finish. And he he will get through with this. She's a psycho man. She is a total total psycho. Now let's see. Um, no, this is not going to affect him negatively, Arachelli. One way or the other, in his mind, he already knows. People who really know who Johnny Depp is and who know the psycho is, they already know. It's just a question of, you know, as a matter of principle, she thought she could take me down. Look at all the stress she caused me. Well, I'm going to show her, I'm going to teach her what it truly means to be taken down. Do you get it? So. Ah! <laughs> He's a very talented Edward Scissorhands. I remember that movie, watching that movie, and I was like, who is this dude? I mean, he's going to be somebody, you know. And then he did the another movie that I really liked was Willy Wonka, uh, you know. So, but Edward Scissorhands is really kind of, I think, that movie kind of, uh, I, when I watched it, I was like, well, this dude is, is he's going to be successful. But, okay, let's see. She's even trying to dress like him in the... She's a... Just because you wear a button-up white shirt and a black jacket and you're trying to appear... You know, all of them do it. All of them do it. All these psycho women, right? Uh, Jodi Arias and all. You look at any one of those women. They are basically... You know what I'm thinking. And then they turn up in court and looking very prim and proper and all of them will be wearing glasses, trying to look very studious. And I'm like, oh my God. You think people don't see through that? Yeah, and then I wear my glasses right away. <laughs> That's because I'm half blind. I need to get my eyes checked, y'all. So I know. It's very sad. He's going to destroy her. She's If anybody's going to be destroyed, it's going to be this psycho. And, and she had it coming. That's what happens, you know. <sighs> Let's see what we get for her. Amber Heard. The tower card. But it's in the reverse. So we'll take it still. This card. Uh, the Queen of Wands. The reverse. OMG. This one popped out first. The Emperor. And this is the page of... Uh, page of uh, pentacles coins come on focus there we go oh. ah. there we go very interesting and then you have the eight of swords <laughs> am i surprised not at all not at all surprised then we have the uh Eight of Swords and then we have the Nine of Swords. Wow. I have a feeling she might be incarcerated at some point. And then we have the Ten of Pentacles.
And then we have the Pope. What's it? It's in the reverse. And then we have the Eight of Pentacles in the reverse. Okay, so now let's take a look. So the Tower card, let's take a look. Tower card in the upright, it means it's Mars, it's disillusionment, it's things coming to an end, etc. But what does the reverse mean? Reverse is the complete opposite, right? You'd assume that there's no nothing coming to an end, and there's no disillusion, there's no nothing. But in this case, it is followed by the Queen of uh, Wands, so, which I think earlier too I said it's her energy that's coming through. Then whatever power she thought she had to be able to topple over or dissolve an individual, an entity, a power, an energy, right? She cannot do that anymore because even she is in the reverse. So she doesn't have any more power to be able to destroy like she used to in the past. She has come to that re realization. Then she has the Emperor card. Now the Emperor card, as we, as we know, is ruled by Aries. And Aries is somebody who has the ability to create wealth, somebody who is uh, wealthy, who, you know, can make decisions, leadership qualities, strong, powerful. Again, rule Aries is ruled by Mars. Now here's the thing. She might have thought she was able to destroy Mars as in his energy. He's popping up here as the king of, uh, I'm sorry, the emperor because he's the primary source of income, earning income, head of the family, etc. Clearly he earned more than she ever did or ever can. She thought she, she had completely destroyed him, etc. but no more. He has popped back up and he's saying, you really think you can do that? Not no more. And then followed by the, um, the page of uh, coins. Now, what does the page of coins say? It talks about um, solutions, finding a new way to uh, come up with new ideas, you know, financial ideas that could give you new projects, new ideas, bring in new money. It's in the reverse. So there is no opportunity for her. I think her career is basically done where she can come up with new projects and creative ideas to continue with a source of uh, income for her. And following that, she has the Eight of uh, Swords. Eight of Swords is her own doing. She has put herself in a situation where her hands are tied, where she can't do anything. She has limited herself. But who did that to her? She did it to herself. And then you have the Nine of Swords, which is talking right under the Queen of uh, Wands. That's her energy. Nine of Swords talks about feeling grief, feeling anxious, anxiety, depression. She did it to herself. She put herself in this situation where she is in prison. She feels like everybody is watching her. She's sitting in a cage and everybody is looking at her like she's some kind of a cuckoo person, which is true. She is. And she feels like, oh my God, poor me. Well, you did it to yourself, dang it. Like, you know, um, you know, ding dong, ding a lang. And then you have the Ten of Pentacles right under the Emperor card. Now, clearly he is reiterated and he's popping up and saying, yes, I am the Emperor here. I am the one, one who controls the money. I am going to, you know, get back my money. But she's feeling grief and anxiety because she knows at some point in time that is going to, the money factor is going to pop up and she's going to be forced to return it back to him. She's going to get something out of her for sure. And then you have the Pope, okay, and that is the Hierophant. And that uh, is a Taurus card and it talks about, you know, uh, the Hierophant can be authority as in you know judge jury you know uh, whoever and here there is the authority card which is in the reverse and it also talks about mercy and com uh, compassion it talks about uh, you know conforming etc he's like screw that B-I-T-C-H, there is no mercy, there is no compassion. And even if it is the authority and she thinks by crying and singing all the stories, she's going to get some sort of a leniency as far as the judge is concerned, I would be so surprised and so disappointed if she gets away scot-free, like nothing ever happened. There is a price that she's going to pay. She thinks she's going to be able to get away with it, but I doubt it. She thinks there is a loophole that she can look at and try to get away with it, but I doubt it. I'm going to be super, super surprised if she walks away scot-free. But I'll tell you another thing. He, for him, it's now a question of it's a game for him. It's a competition. I'm here to win. And he is going to win. There's no more compassion. There's no more I feel sorry for you. It's okay. I'm going to let you go. One way or the other, he's going to win. Because now it's like, I'm here to win. I'm going to show you what that is. What winning really is. And then you have the Eight of Pentacles in the reverse. Now, Eight of Pentacles in the reverse, it 
Eight of Pentacles is continue to work, you know, chip away, continue to work, continue to, to do what you're doing, what you do best, your source of income. It's right under his thing, right? He, uh, Aries, card, the Emperor, the Ten of Pentacles uh, is upright. And then the Eight of Pentacles, he has reached a point where he doesn't give a flip what happens to his career. I've, I've done great projects. I've won whatever I needed to and I proved myself as an actor. Henceforth, any projects that come, I'm going to just pick and choose. Anyway, that's what Johnny Depp did. He's a true artist. He picked and chose what he wanted to work on, always hit the nail on the head. So he's like, I really don't care. I'm not concerned. And my focus is not on work. My focus is not on my skill sets. If it comes, it'll come. Otherwise, it won't. Right? My focus right now is to financially... Um, cause, uh, to cause enough trouble for her where her work, her source of income is completely reversed, meaning she's not going to be able to have any work. I think her career in Hollywood is kind of pretty much done. I wouldn't be surpri surprised if she kind of, uh, you know, I don't know what her contract says, you know, if she has any, any projects going on, it may complete and she's going to be petered out or she may end up doing some Z-rated movies or whatever. I... I I would be very surprised to see her career back up where it used to be. Not that she was anything great, but um, wait. Okay, Arachali has a question. Arachali has a good question. Hold on, Arachali. I'm coming. Let's see. Uh, I don't know how to do that, Susie. What is your question? Is Johnny placed in a life to teach her a lesson? No, it's in fact the other way around. I think this was to teach. Johnny is a little bit of a giving person, okay? He's a little generous. He's a real softy. Emotionally, he's a very, very sensitive man. And I'm not saying this because, oh, look at Johnny Depp because of what's transpired in his life. Like I said, he's a very sensitive person. And when he, like, um, for him, it's slightly scorpionic too. I want to look at his astrology chart. I wouldn't be surprised if he's got a Scorpio moon or something or something in there because very intense emotions, right? When he gives, he gives 100% because he likes that sense of belonging. I wouldn't be surprised if he also has some Leo in his chart, a sense of belonging, wanting to have that, you know, for him belonging and having that family, something called his own. Very intense, very intense. This guy will fall hard. And he really will. He's there for the long run. But when he realizes that he has been betrayed or stabbed or whatever, he's not going to write off the bat, say, off with your head, get out of the house. Because he still feels like, oh, you know, let's try and work it out. But once he's turned the corner, that's it. So I don't think she's been put in a, he's been put in a life to teach her a lesson. I think this has really woken him up to reality and what life is and the kind of people. He's, he's not innocent. He understands that they are good, bad and ugly. But now it's like a new awakening for him. He said, oh my God, that kind of a thing. When you, okay, she talks about poop. What the hell? What? I've never heard anybody say anything negative about uh, Johnny Depp except the psycho. But then again, you know, Susie, I understand. But then again, it's like, it's like uh, how much of the movie has already been filmed and, you know, that sort of a thing. I mean, look at that guy, uh, Kevin Spacey, when all the drama happened about him, the whole movie, it was done. They went and took out his images and they uh, superimposed with uh, that Palmer or whatever that guy's name is who acted in The Sound of Music. I forget his name. Um, so if they really want to do, they'll do it. Maybe they're thinking that, you know, for salaciousness, they'll keep it. But it's going to hurt their, um, their uh, um, what do they call this, uh, franchise. Hey, Ice Princess. T.D. Amber pooped on his bed. Oh, my gosh, she's a psycho. Uh, whatever, she's a cuckoo, complete cuckoo psycho. So, um, and remember uh, that whole drama about Aquaman, what's his face's name? Uh, oh my God, what's his face's name? Shoot. Uh, oh, wow. Good to know, Aquarius girl. Um, 
wonder what happened to his marriage with Vanessa. I won't, I won't go into that. We'll just leave it. Jason Momoa. See, one thing I'll tell you with regards to Johnny Depp, there is a sense of uh, deep maturity, uh, a great need to have the flexibility to think like him, to be flexible, to think outside the box, that creative energy to have that flexibility and to be able to keep up with him as far as his cerebral, cerebral antics are concerned, meaning his forays into uh, thinking about all these weird things. And that is what he finds most attractive. So he will be drawn to people who almost it almost seem like uh, toxic, okay? It's weird, but he will be drawn to people like that uh, because he thinks it's something different. It's But then in the long haul, he realizes it isn't. That's not what he needs. Uh, okay. Okay, Jason Momoa, yeah, Jason Momoa, he, when he was like, oh, he's supporting her, I'm like, dude, what the hell, but then again, you have to think about it, for him, it's his career, the movie tanks, he doesn't make money, right, depending on what his contract was, he might have said, okay, you know, smart these days, right, if you're acting in a, fran a movie that has become a franchise, then it's not just what you get paid for acting in the movie, all the residual passive income that comes out of it, so what's he going to do, I mean, on the one hand, it's a question of math and money and business, I mean, you know, he's stuck between a rock and a hard place, but he were, if he was going to be going over to Amber and holding her hand and saying, you poor baby, I would have got up there and I would have been like, don't do it. So, that marriage again, Jason Momoa's marriage was never meant to be. All that thing, oh, we love each other and we've been together for 16 years, 18 years, yeah, until you establish yourself. Uh, there are a whole bunch of people who do that. Look at what's his face and name, uh, Dwayne Johnson. He was married to his wife for the longest of time. And then when he switched his careers and decided to get into Hollywood and uh, I mean, well, I'm not saying that there was no problem in the relationship, I'm sure, because if there was no problem, they would have still been together. But then again, I do believe, you know, a lot of these people, you know, as they call them starter wives, it's very unfortunate, but it is, it is a fact of life. And a lot of women also do that, start a husbands, and they're like, oh, okay, I got this under my belt. It's a weirdest thing. I don't understand that concept. Okay, but it is a fact of life. It does happen, you know. So, um, yeah. I am serious. If, if Jason and her get together, it'll be the stupidest thing he's ever done in all his life and serves him right. Any guy, any guy or any gal gets together with this psycho, you know, they're doing it with their eyes wide open and they deserve whatever comes their way. That's on them. Who bugs you? What? What? I missed a whole bunch. What? Louis Dunya. Jason is my analysis. Who Jason Mamoha? You know what, girls, I'll tell you. Let's, uh, we have a lot. I don't know how many guys are watching this, but hey, guys, I mean, here, you know, have at it. So, look, it's not just men who, uh, uh, you know, they say typically men are very visual and women are more, you know, uh, about the emotion aspect of it or whatever. Let's face it, a lot of women are visual too, right? I mean, sure, you're attracted to someone, or you find somebody, I shouldn't say attracted to, you find, if you see somebody who is, uh, looks in, for you, what the ideal physical visual could be different than somebody else, right? So if you see somebody who has that ideal physical whatever, form or shape, then it's going to catch your eye because it's all about visuals and these days it, you know there's no such i never believe that you know it's only men who turn and look a lot of women turn and look too and what the heck is wrong with that you know a lot of women get mad and say why are you looking at her and why are you you know don't look at her and yeah you could say uh, i'm going to fess up there were times when i used to be like what the hell are you doing looking at her making making googly eyes at her what's wrong with you 
But uh, again, it's a question of how mature you are, how confident you are within yourself as an individual, and uh, what really does it mean to you? How does that truly affect your psyche? And are you so unsure of yourself and your self-confidence is so so fragile that just your significant other looking at another woman is going to rattle your nerves? Um, if any woman says it has never bothered me, she's lying. Uh, let me assure you, because we've all gone through those, that phase, okay? I will fess up. There was a time when I would be like, I actually would ask, what the hell are you looking at her for? you looking at her, go be with her. I've said that, you know? But and again, it's, it's a question of not having that self-confidence. And we are also territorial. Women are territorial. It's not just guys who are territorial. Women are too. But you begin to understand once you, your self-confidence and you builds up and... You know, if anybody says, oh, my self-confidence was never shaky ever in my life, they are lying too. So, lying about that too. So, it's, you know, through process of learning about yourself, understanding yourself, what truly matters to you, and that evolution of your character, your personality, yourself, you reach a point where it, it, you understand that, oh, okay. If you find that the individual visually attractive and you just want to turn and look, do that. But, you know, why should I stop you when I myself do that, right? Or just because you're doing that, I'm not going to purposely do that just to say, aha, you look, so I'm also going to look, right? But on the other hand, if you're going to be looking at or making googly eyes at any pretty thing crossing by, and if I make googly eyes at some guy and you get all your knickers in a twist about it, I'm going to say, what gravy is good enough for the goose is good enough for the gander. Right? So there are a lot of guys who are super, super territorial. There are a lot of women who are super, super territorial. It all depends on what your equation is with yourself and what your equation is with your partner. But then again, is that all it is? Just a visual blip on the screen? Or are you going to pursue that into something else? That's what really makes all the difference. I think I kind of said too much, but anyhow. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Scott and Quagga. With age comes maturity and self-confidence. So true. Echoing again. Oh my God. Chastity belt in public if he was mine. <laughs> that is so, so, so funny. Paul Walker really. I'm going to do it on Monday. Yes. Yes. What are they saying sad about? I don't know, Miss I don't. Okay, what? Well, I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Uh, no, I'm not going to do Paul Walker now. I'll do it on Monday, Delvin. Okay, yeah, Susie Q, she's laughing at Delvin. Delvin tried to kind of sneak that one in. <laughs> We didn't age, we get wiser. Yeah, we don't age, we get wiser. Um, I was having this interesting conversation with my son today. I'm going to share that. I'm not doing Paul Walker now, Delvin. I'll do it on Monday for sure. I'm not doing it now. We didn't age. Okay. So just, I'm sorry if, I, if you misunderstood that. It's, a, it's so, so interesting that the subject comes up now because um, I, was, I was having this, this conversation with my son today and, uh, you know, he was, uh, he had been talking to, to, to some girl, whatever, and I said, hey, so what's going on? And we had this great conversation and, and I was telling him, you know, uh, you have to decide what your parameters are, what you're willing to to compromise on what is negotiable for you, what is an absolute non-negotiable for you, you know, that sort of a thing. And and even though you you know all of that with absolute certainty and clarity, what's to say that your list is not going to change 10 years from now? There are no guarantees, correct? There are no guarantees. Now, um, and he, he, he asked me, he goes, Mom, um, you know, when, how, like, they say, oh, we fell in love at first sight. What does that mean? I said, some people have said, like, you know, within 30 seconds of meeting her, whenever I knew she was going to be my wife, or I saw him from across the room and I knew I was going to marry him and he was my husband. I told my mother he's going to be my husband. You know, a lot of people have said that and good for them. 
come to find out they've been married for 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, etc. So how do you know? You never know. You've got to go by what your heart tells you and what your gut tells you. But I did tell him this, and I say this quite a bit, and people I don't think they really understand. Don't beat your heart over its head. Go figure that out. Okay? So it's a question of what you want and need in life now is, is it going to be the exact same 10 years down the line? And if it isn't going to be the exact same 10 years down the line, whoever is your partner now, will you be able to adapt and will that partner be able to adapt to your changing needs? Just as you are, you have to be adaptable to your spouse's or partner's changing needs 10 years down the line. So how confident are you that you can do that and how confident are you that your partner will be able to do that for you? So yeah, a whole bunch of talking, right? Anyhow. So, this has been a fab life again. Thank you, Susie. Uh, JD's beauty, I meant to say. <laughs> Smoking bit. Okay. So, nobody could have acted in the pilot's movie besides Johnny Depp. I mean, I can't even visualize anybody else as Scissors, Edward Scissors and or whatever. Uh, Thank you. Ah. <laughs> See, both of you are very, very intense, right? Uh, so, yeah, exactly. Well said, Auntie. All right, y'all. So, if you have no questions, we will call it a night, right? So, uh, oh, my camera stopped. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Okay, let's fix this. Oh, my God. Oh, buddy, baby. What to do, baby? My camera died just now. I'm about to change the camera. Yowza. Okay. So let's figure this one out. Oh, hang on. Ooh, hello. Oh my goodness. Oh, there we go. Thank God. Oh, my goodness. Sorry about that, everybody. The camera uh, power ran out on the battery, so I had another one charging, and I just changed it. Uh, on the... Let me see. Sunshine Dragonfly. Uh, wait a second. Where's my calendar? April. It's going to be on the last Saturday of every month. That's right, on the 30th. Right. So let me put that on my calendar because I, cause I hadn't. Let me do that. Uh, zoom for subscribers. We said 11 a.m., right? Oh. Yeah. It's on my calendar, yeah. So prayers will be too. I know. So sad. I hope. I hope I'm wrong. I hope they found a lie. But uh, good night, Auntie. Oh, Debbie, thank you. Wait, am I mistaken? Did I say the fourth Saturday or the last Saturday? Oh my God, I'm probably mistaken. Hang on, you guys. I think uh, Sunshine Dragonfly uh, kind of uh, confused me. I'm sorry. Was it the fourth? Did I? Somebody help me here. Somebody help me here. 
Did did we agree? On, wait, I can look up my calendar. When was the last one? So we did say the last Saturday of every month, correct? Somebody help me here, y'all. 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Did I say the fourth Saturday or the last Saturday? I think I said the last Saturday. If I made a mistake, because I'm looking at March calendar, and March, the, the Zoom was on the 26th, which was basically the last Saturday. So, I think it was the last Saturday. Yeah. Woo. I kind of confused, got confused there. Yeah, the last Saturday on the 30th. I have it on my calendar. Uh, 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 will be fine. Yeah, last Saturday. I figured... No worries, it happens, right? We kind of uh, do get confused sometimes and it's all good. So, oh, last Saturday. Uh, yes, thank you everybody. I do appreciate you all. Let me take a moment to, that's okay. It's no worries, it never hurts to ask. And I hadn't had it on my calendar, so thanks that you asked because Alia, thank you. Caricos, thank you. Delvin, thank you. Courtney, thank you. Pandora Spox, thank you. Susie Q, thank you. Carrie Finlay, thank you. Sunshine Dragonfly, thank you. Debbie Bagley, thank you. Lucinda5563, thank you. Noble C, thank you. Uh, Pandora Spox, then Gypsy Girl, of course, thank you. Alia Ali, thank you. Aracheri, thank you. Crystal Pink, thank you. Uh, Elizabeth Anguano, thank you. Uh, Auntie, thank you. Uh, Delvin, thank you. Crystal Pink, Noble C, I said that. Pandora Fox, Debbie Bagley, Ali Ali, Aracelli. Uh, who am I missing? Carrie Finley, thank you. Arte, hey girl, hey. Auntie, yeah, I did say that. Shami. Did I see Aquarius girl earlier? Scout Inquirer, thank you. Crystal Pink, thank you. Uh, I'm sure I missed some names here. Uh, Courtney, I did say thank you. Scout Inquirer. My Max Hunter, thank you. Uh, who am I missing? If I miss anybody's name, you'll know there's no offense meant of the Carrie Kathleen Cheney, thank you. Um, mm, 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 mm. Aquarius girl, yeah, I thought I saw her. Uh, who am I missing? Who am I missing? Uh, I think I answered Arachari's question, so we're good. Okay. Okay. TD, thank you. Uh, Amber popped on his bed. What? Oh, pooped on his bed. Oh my God. She crazy, isn't she? Ice Princess, thank you. Um, if I miss anybody's name, you all know I just missed it, no specific reason. Sometimes when I scroll, it kind of zips by really fast and I'm like, wait, 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 come back here. And then I can't backtrack because I get kind of lost in this whole thing. So, anyhow. Uh, all right, everybody. <laughs> so I'm going to say uh, thank you and good night, everybody. Oh. I'm not typing in caps lock because I'm mad at anybody. I just, I don't know why it's on. So I just left it there on blessed be. Oops. The, uh, family. And thank you, Gypsy Girl, for moderating. I appreciate you. Uh, take care, everybody. Thank you so much for sharing your Friday evenings with me. I really do appreciate you all. Of course, please do uh, leave your comments. Thank you, Suzy Q, again for the unexpected surprise gift. I absolutely loved it. Thank you so much. You know, the best gift for me is the fact that you folks are joining me and wanting to share your time and are interested in what I do. That is the biggest gift. So thank you so much. 
so much and for taking the time out to put your comments, to interact with me. That's just absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love it. So please know I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. We'll call it 10 4. How about that? 10 4 all. Y'all. Typical Texas, right? Y'all. All right. I'm going to log out now. I'll end the stream, okay? Thank you again. Take care and much love to you. Blessed be. All right. Stream is ended. Then let's go 